stream on proco.com and then you just leave a comment there um and you got slack open or are you going to be on that page um i guess i'll go on slack for now yeah kind of i don't know lagging on john if you're watching <laughs> and mike just put those questions in slack um so well are there already questions that you can start me off with uh yeah there are yeah. awesome no, um, wait, no they're not let's, well, uh, let's get well not in slack but um, so, but anyway, while we wait for those questions, um, this is part of the, the launch of Proco 2.0. Um, it's just, it's, you know, a new platform for instructors to teach on and sell their educational stuff. And then it's like a social network. You can follow courses and instructors and get like all this educational content in your feed. Um, so if you haven't checked it out yet, go to Proco.com. And we, we've launched like a, a new course every day this week. We kind of went a little overboard with launching new stuff. So uh, go check that stuff out. Scott Flanders concept art course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah David's doing well. David, David Finch's Guardian. comic Guardian. course. Uh, Andrew Keith's sculpting course. Uh, Dorian Eaton. 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 God, I always forget. Dorian Eaton's uh, drawing and lighting and value guides. Um, Marco Bucci's color thing. Marco Bucci's color, color yeah. course, and a metal dory just posted today. Uh, skin tone. A skin tone video, but that that's part of. So the free video that came out on our channel today is for skin tones, and that's a free video from his course that he also posted on Broker.com today. So lots of stuff. I think that's actually more than one a day. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's really exciting, probably for me. <laughs> um, and I will switch over here now nope that's not right again <laughs> over here so i'm gonna be painting david finch you guys are seeing the colors probably a little bit more exaggerated than i am um i don't know why the camera's picking up those colors so bright but from the screen um which one should i do i like the second one a bit, quite a bit. There, there's he did two different styles so he's got one where he doesn't have the the secondary light coming in, and where it's just like a much sharper or a much more contrast in the shadow and light. Uh, and then he's got the orange light, which I don't know. Maybe I'll do both. That that's that would be an interesting study. Um, probably better to start with with the one without the light, just to kind of get those shapes um, figured out. And then it's easier to then do another one where I add on a secondary light source onto it after I already understand the first light source. Um, wish we cleaned this iPad before. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I think it looks fine once I zoom in. That looks good. I like that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. All right. Um, so the first thing I do when I start painting is I have to pick the colors I want to use. All right. So I just I picked up a bunch from my from my color collection. Um, these are kind of very very typical ones that I usually use. Um, this one's very warm though, so so I'll, yeah, I'll probably end up using a lot of these, um, and then maybe just like one blue, one green, just because there's not that much. I like to keep my palette simple. Um, usually just because if, if I have at least the primaries I could mix most other colors um, and then everything else is basically just a, a convenience color for me to just mix faster so definitely I, I need a you know a cold yellow then uh, let's see cat orange and cat red so definitely need those for blue, I could go either way. I could go with a cerulean, or I can go with an ultramarine. Doesn't matter too much. What do you think? Which one? Which one? I'm not you much choose. of a painter. Just uh, choose a random one. Uh, I like the smaller one more. The smaller one? Yeah. That's because it's more expensive. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for wasting my money. Yeah. Uh, more expensive paint is better, right? <laughs> <laughs> not, not always. Uh, and then viridian or sap? Uh, viridian, for viridian? sure. Yeah. For sure? Why? Yeah, yeah. I just 
have a preference for root. Okay. Right? I mean, I would have actually chosen this one. Yeah. Just because it's warmer and this painting is so warm, this will be much easier. Actually, I'm just going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? I, I, I don't, I'm playing no role here. It doesn't really matter. I could totally make it work with the other one, too. It's just this is going to make my job a little bit easier. Um, just because, like, you know, it, I don't know. I, I could mix this with the blue and make a very pretty close to Viridian one as well. So. All right. And then, you know, so, oh, my, where's my white? Oh, my God. I didn't bring white. Can you go get me a white? Yeah. Um, some people don't paint with black. I like to paint with black. I'll put it in there. Sometimes I'll put it on there and I actually never actually use it. So it really depends once I start painting what I need. Sometimes I just like make my darks um, like a very colorful dark. Like I'll, I'll mix. Oh, I don't have my ultramarine. Ooh, that'll be interesting. I usually like to mix alizarin and ultramarine together for my black. But now I don't have that. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. Oh, that works. Um, da, da, da. And then I'm going to add Quinn Rose in there. It's very similar. I don't need it in here, but my daughter's name is Quinn Rose. And so I'm just going to put that in there because I like Quinn Rose now. Um, and I'm going to go with. Uh, I'll go with ultra or yellow ochre. Okay, there's my colors plus the white. You could definitely get away with much less than this uh, for color studies, but I'm just gonna have fun. And also, it'll make it easier for me uh, for a stream to have more colors out because I have to mix less because um, there's just like colors that are a little more convenient. Um, okay, cool. Ah, oh, jeez. Came prepared. <laughs> I came prepared. I knew. I was like, "Ooh, I haven't opened these tubes in like a year, so I'm gonna." Okay, go ahead and ask me some questions, Christian, while I open these. Yeah, we'll Not much fun stuff is gonna be happening, actually. I'm gonna switch over to this because I'm just um, gonna be putting these colors down on my palette. <laughs> do you have plans for scholarships for some some students who have a low budget? We've been thinking about that. Yeah, actually. Um, we, we haven't started planning any details on it, but for sure, um, I mean, one of the main missions of what we're doing is to make art education accessible to anyone around the world. And so like making it affordable to anyone is a very big part of that, right? So so yes, for sure, we're, we're gonna be doing that. I mean, here, I'll show a little bit. So. I usually use a lot of white, especially with skin tones. It's like just in it. Not even. I mean, he's he's not. He doesn't have dark skin, um, so obviously I'm going to be using a lot more white. But even if it was like if I was painting my wife, who, who's you know much darker than me, I would still be using a lot of white, not to lighten the value, but sometimes to mute the colors a little bit. You know, you you can't just use. Is it? You can't just use these without white in order to shift uh, the, the, the colors and the hues and the values and the chromas, all that around the color wheel. So white is just the color that you end up using the most in pretty much every mixture you make. So I just start out with a lot of it. Uh, next question. Um, what do you think the most effective way to study color is? Any uh, tips or advice? Um, the most effective for me was plain air painting, um, probably because I actually loved doing it, and so I was able to go out there and well, not able to, but I was I was inspired to just constantly go out and do it, and it was very helpful to paint quick studies. Um, yeah, when you're when you're studying color, you just need to do a lot of quicker studies. Kind of like the best way to study gesture is through quick sketch, right? You're not going to do, you're not going to study gesture very quickly, or you're not going to get better at gesture if you're just always doing 20 hour drawings. It's better to do five minute drawings and just do a lot of them. Same thing with color. It's better to do, you know, 30 minute paintings, do a bunch of them, do one hour paintings, do three hour paintings, and just study the colors of the things you're looking at. 
and I really liked to do that with landscapes plain air because I liked going outside it was just it just felt more exciting than staying indoors and painting like a still life some fruits or something still very useful I mean you could study the colors of anything uh, but definitely if you're studying color do it from life Try not to do it from photographs. I'm, I'm doing it from a photograph today just because you know, I'm live streaming, but I rarely ever, if I'm actually doing a color study, will do it from, like if I'm trying to practice, I rarely do it from a photo. Um, in school, we always had models come in and still life set up and plan our, uh, plan our classes. Um, oh, and by the way, I have a, I have a large canvas here. When I do color studies, I usually don't do something this big, and I might not even do full size here. I might just start in the corner and do one, and then do a few others. Um, I also have some others just in case I want to do. I want to separate. Um, but yeah, if you if you start with a big canvas, you're probably going to end up just spending more time on it. So if you're doing color studies. Uh, go small at first. It also kind of forces you to not go into too much detail if your palette is small, because you know your brush, right? Like, depending, on, I guess you can get a one-haired brush and put detail, but you know, a typical brush is like, you know, you won't go too much smaller with this. Um, and so if your if your canvas is like this big. Like you can't go into detail. You have to just put like big, big patches of color in there. Okay, next question. Um, hello, Proco. I'm a final year product design student. I've recently been thinking to switch my career from being a product designer to a digital artist, and I'm having a tough time balancing both. Um, Pro from product designer to digital artist? Yes. Okay. Um, I also don't know if I'll be able to do it well. Can you please suggest a good approach? Um, I mean, I guess like with any new skill, you just have to practice it. It's kind of, um, I think I need to understand the, the actual challenge that you're having. I mean, you, it's not like you have a disadvantage because you're coming from a product design background. You, you know, if you want to get good at digital, you have to do exactly what everyone else does that needs to get good at digital. You got to get some digital tools and start painting digitally. Um, yeah, I don't know. D do you, did I miss part of that question? No, I mean, it, it sounds about right. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I think, I mean, it's obviously a huge career shift, but um, yeah. I suspect that there's a lot of parallels between studying product design and digital art. Um, yeah, you're still speaking a visual language. Um, so you're still, you're still going to be using similar... And also, it's like, well, digital art, like, what does that even mean? There's just so much, there's such a big range to digital art. You could do product design digitally. So, so maybe there, there's, your, like, your step where you could, you could start doing product design with the digital and just learn the tools and then transition over to whatever, whatever you mean by digital art, like fine art painting, illustration, concept art. I'm not sure what you mean exactly. Hmm. Um, yeah, sorry if I if I misinterpreted your question there. <laughs> These colors are like the same. <laughs> so, I don't even remember. Wait, so let me see. For, okay, so this is a lizard and this is Quinn Rose. We'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I can see a slight difference. Very, yeah, very there, there is a slight difference. I mean, it's not the yeah, same yeah. color, but yeah, uh, I could certainly use one of them. I just I should have just not used the lizard and I should have just yeah. gone with Quinn Rose. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to celebrate my my new daughter here. Mm. Yeah. You failed. I failed. <laughs> you failed. By introducing a lizard. Yeah. My old daughter. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at that. Oh god. I just love that color. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's nice. Um, Andrew Keith asks, uh, "What's your favorite?" Andrew Keith. Yeah, yeah, uh, Andrew Keith. Our yeah. sculptor. Our sculptor even says our sculptor. Yeah, yeah. Like we own Andrew. <laughs> Keith. Yeah, yeah, he's ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. When you Google Andrew Keith, it's probably a Proco. It says, thing. It says parentheses <laughs> yeah. Proco artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah. You're an individual. Yeah. 
Okay, what's his question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite palette of colors that you might use for quicker uh, gesture studies? Um, it depends on it depends on the subject. I, I I don't have any like specific palettes that I use. Like if I'm doing a portrait painting indoors, where it's like a model is lit with like a you know one of these light. Like if I was to just like paint myself looking at the screen in front of me, I could do a Zorn palette, right? Basically yellow ochre, red, uh, black and white. And I can get away with that. That's a very limited palette, but I could get a pretty good. A good enough color range in there to represent an indoor lighting situation. If I'm doing plain air painting, I'm not going to do that palette. That's ridiculous, right? That palette is basically just meant for skin tones. Just w a lot of warm tones. I mean, it's the only colors in there are yellow and red. And then you got black and white. And some people put mix in a little bit of ultramarine into the black to make the black a little bit more cold. But they don't keep the ultramarine separate in order to have that pure blue it's mixed into the black just so that it's not a gray black it's a like cold black um and you can get any race from that like but because no nobody's skin is cold it's everybody's warm it's just a lighter or darker version of it and so it's like a range of browns and then if you need to shift it towards green you add a little bit more of the black and yellow and you mix those together it's a little more green or black and red a little more purpley um so you, you can kind of shift them, but they're very muted. Um, but yeah, for for um, for plain air, I wouldn't do that. Usually for like still lifes, I wouldn't do that. I usually just personally, I just look at what I'm what I'm gonna paint and I just think, okay, what are the colors I want to use here? Um, try to imagine the picture in the end. Um, some people do like a warm, cool primary where they have. The three primary colors, and they have a warm and a cool version of each. So warm and a cool yellow, a warm and a cool red, warm and a cool blue. Right? So you you don't have like a a green in there. You just have a cool or a warm and a cool green. So I'd have like the sap and the viridian. Um, so you, it's it really doesn't matter too much because you when you limit your palette, what happens is you naturally start to harmonize your colors a little bit easier. You don't have as many options to mess up and go out of the uh, unharmonize your colors. Um, good question, Andrew. Thanks. Yeah, once you start adding more colors to your palette, that's where it actually gets becomes more difficult to harmonize because you just got so many options. Like you got the whole rainbow to, to choose from, and and it could go. You can lose control of it. Uh, John Asaro's paintings are great for that. They're really simple. I thought you were about to say, John Asaro was asking. No, no, yeah, no yeah, John <laughs> like, what? Oh, yeah, the planes of the head. Yeah. Yeah. So. What do you think of my sculpture? Yeah. I love it. Hmm. Anyway, what what did you say? Uh, John Asaro's <laughs> paintings are perfect for that. They're really simple, yeah. wacky colors, but they, they work well together. So. It's uh, fi finer pieces. Have, have, have you seen? Oh, yeah, his yeah. paintings. Yes, paintings. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 paintings. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I keep everything. When you say John Asar, I just think of. I always this, think of the, the sculpt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, his. Um, yeah, his are super bright. It's like all over the place, but it still works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. God, it, there's there's a glare on this oh, yeah. iPad, so I'm gonna have to be over here. Yeah. Let's get close. To <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm getting knocked off the screen a bit. God. Sorry, guys. Okay, I can. There. Do you want me to, I can go That's and try. Right. That's okay. okay. <laughs> um, do you want to paint for a second, or do you want to? Do you want a um, question? Yeah. Let me. Uh, well, go ahead and ask a question, and I might just make you answer it. Um. <laughs> well, this is this is for you. So. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, hey, Stan. Who are your go-to uh, masters for studying color? Oof. Ooh, that Oh, there's a lot of people. I don't. Um, I don't think there were any go-to's. Um, I've studied Richard Schmidt, um, obviously. I mean, if, you, if you've read the book, you have to study his paintings as well. Um, Morgan Weisling. Probably. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mark. Yeah, of course. Probably I've studied Morgan Weisling's colors the most. Um, so, Morgan, um, Calvin Liang. When I was doing. A lot of plein air paintings his colors were like really bright i mean but obviously the instructors i had at watts were probably the one of the bigger influences on me like 
you know, Jeff Watts, Ben Young, um, Robert Watts. I did a lot of plein air paintings with him. Um, I took, I took plant, painting classes with like Meadow and Eric, uh, Lucas. All right. So I'm just going to do a really quick linear land. I'm, one of the great things about, one of the things I love about color studies is that I allow myself not to care too much about proportions <laughs> because I want to allow myself to focus on color. And that to me is like a, it's like a little relief. Like, oh, good. Okay. If I mess up with these proportions, um, I'm okay. Like, I, I don't, I'm not going to feel bad about it. So I'm going to do that today as well. Where I'm, I'm pr not going to measure too much. I'm just going to really quickly get a shape in and be like, all right, that's a cool, good enough looking shape. And let's just continue to color. Um, so yeah, I, I'm probably I'm just gonna do a several probably on here. I want to force myself to Actually, let's do smaller. I mean, if you if you want another question, yeah, go okay. ahead. Um, will you ever try three D art? Yeah, dude, that's where I started. <laughs> Look up Stanimation on YouTube. Um, Stanimation Inc. Inc. Um, there you, you'll find some of my animations I did in high school. Um, yeah, originally my my plan was to be a three D animator for like Pixar or something. That's what I wanted to do. And then I started training at Watts and uh, switched to fine art. So, yeah, I did. But he's probably asking like sculpting like like creatures yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Right. No, I, I I probably won't. Um, and it's weird painting on a table. I'm so used to painting at an easel where the surface is vertical. I have to like rotate my wrist. Hmm. <laughs> I used to do this all the time, like in high school. Is there an advantage to painting at an angle? Uh, like on yeah. down or yeah. when it's in front of you? Well, yeah, when it's in front of you. Probably, yeah, because I could I can keep my right. wrist locked and paint um, paint like this. Whereas if it's down, I have to like do this, and that's kind of I'm, I'm painting more with my wrist instead of my right. my shoulder. So yeah, it, it is more awkward here to draw with, but that's okay. I'm not gonna be doing much drawing. I'm gonna just do tiles of color. Next question. Um, Storm Engineer asks, uh, Schoolism has a subscription where you pay a small amount and can access all videos, but can, can't interact with the teachers. Would you do something like that in the future? The course prices are fair, but for people in poorer countries, hundreds of dollars can be impossible to afford. Um, not sure what their prices are. Schoolism is a completely different business model, right? They do workshops. Uh, I believe it's $300 a month, but you have access to, you know, a single teacher yeah, at a so time. Yeah, so three hundred dollars a month. No, no, thirty dollars a month. Thir so, oh, okay. So, sorry. So that, yeah, so thirty dollars a month. So you get, and you get access to the teacher, or uh, you don't get access. I, I don't know exactly. I don't okay. think you do. Yeah, so we have a completely different model. Like we, ours is we we focus on highly produced videos that you then keep forever, whereas I believe schoolism is more of a workshop model, right? Is that <laughs> well, I, I think it's. I mean, it's it's subscription based based on the teacher. So you choose. Yeah. You can only be subscribed to one teacher at a time, but you have access to their videos only. So okay. to switch, you have to, you know, the next month you have to choose another teacher to be I subscribed. See. I think that's how it works. It might okay. even be. I think it's, it actually might be fifteen dollars a month. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. How much it costs, but. Yeah. So it's um, it's just totally different. Subscription and purchasing a product forever is just totally different. You can't really make that comparison. Um, so if you're like studying with a single artist for three months and you're paying thirty dollars each month, well, that's a hundred dollars at the end of it, and you after three months you're done with it. If you purchase that same thing for a hundred dollars and you have it forever, that might be cheaper. I don't. I mean, maybe not. It really depends on how much you use the content. But if you plan on referencing back to those to that content later, 
I don't think that it's actually more expensive. Well, well for example, uh, this person lives on $200 a month. Yeah. Um, they're saying. And um, I guess they're, they're so. asking if, if you would ever consider. Uh, yeah, I, I think the... The, yeah, the, the solution there is to allow like scholarships and allow people that can't afford it to be able to show that they can't afford it and get get it for a cheaper price. Um, I don't think changing like our business model would be the correct answer to that. Um, but anyway, yeah, we, we definitely, I think, I, I mean, that was the first question I answered here was like, we want to make lessons accessible to everybody. It shouldn't be about money. That's why we publish so many free videos, right? Like it's, we, we want to, even if you don't buy anything, you should still be able to learn. Um, so my courses most are like a huge percent of it is available online for free. So yeah, like 60%, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Most of it, I think. Most of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a very short response from you, but okay. I'm, I'm going to ask it anyway. Cool. Hi, Stan. Great to see you on stream. So any quick and easy and cheap alternatives to hard work and practicing in order to improve make, in making art? No, I guess. That's what you're expecting? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. there isn't. So okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Why would you even ask that? <laughs> I don't know. So. Yeah. Hard work. Uh, you not know, you, but why not? Oh, yeah, dactyl. Yeah, yeah I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they know the answer. Yeah, like, but <laughs> I'm pretty are sure they just rhetorical. trying to like pull my strings here? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, it oh, feels geez. like it. I have nowhere to push my put my. Uh... Is that a uh, rosemary brush? This? Yeah. Uh, this one specifically is Gray Matter, by Jack Richardson. Nice. Yeah. Someone's asking? No, I'm, I'm asking. Oh, you're asking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I need to get into some colors in here. <laughs> We're 30 minutes in, and I haven't put down a, a color. Um... Uh, would you like a, another question? Yes, please. Um, I have never painted, so I was wondering if I should start to learn painting digitally or then move on to traditional, traditional or vice versa. So they're asking if they should learn digital and then traditional or I'm not sure because I don't have experience in, in like starting in one and then going to the other, but I've heard that starting in traditional moving to digital is easier than the reverse. Um, so based on what I've heard, maybe that's true. <laughs> um, I don't, but I, you know, obviously I studied with traditional and I didn't like move completely to digital. I still primarily do traditional. I think it depends on whatever you're going to do more. Like if you yeah. enjoy digital yeah. painting more, you should do that before yeah. d traditional paint. Like if you're going to paint more, if you digitally paint, you should. Uh... I'm trying to figure out what I want to do here. I, I think I, I was about to start mixing the lighter tones. I'm going to start with actually the shadow tone. Um, and so so the, you guys, it's, it sucks that you guys can't actually see the real colors. Um, this is more cool. This is more like, it's got definitely got more colder tones in the highlights and the like the purples and stuff you see in here are much colder purples than in the shadow which is more yellowy um we'll see so so i'm gonna mix more of like a yellowy shadow color yellowy green and i'm gonna actually just exaggerate that difference initially because i could always bring them closer together um i guess i could always bring them further apart as well but <laughs> whatever Kind of, what's up? Um, somebody is asking if I'm your dad, your son, or someone else. If you are my <laughs> dad, me, yeah, I think so. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, no, David. Uh, yeah, sorry, that that makes more sense. Wait, asking, what? Asking if David is your dad. No, why would he be my dad? Da David's a professional. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Somebody's asking who who you're painting essentially. Oh, yeah. who I'm painting? <laughs> yeah. Oh, does David look like me? That he I could, could kind of, I could see him dad? being. I could see him being your dad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So see how I'm I'm going really simple with the with the uh, shapes in here right now. I need to just get in a color feel and just make sure that it 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 looks 
decent. And then as I go down the face, I want to look for transitions in the hue. So up here, I'm seeing a lot more greens right through the forehead in there. And then as it goes down, maybe a little more pink in in here and in here. So, But then actually it gets a little bit more green again down here. So I'll, I'll come back here, add some greens. Yeah, I'm like, I'm painting like this. It's weird. But whatever. Uh, do you have any tips from painting from a photo? Um, yeah. Uh, it's, you got, you have to make sure that you are thinking about how photographs are different from real life. That, um, they don't capture as much variety in the color. And so sometimes you have to inject more color variety into it, make it more exciting than what you're seeing in the photograph. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, when you, if you take a course caricature class, you're, he's always teaching you to like exaggerate everything about things. You can, you can exaggerate color as well. Um, and yeah, I've, I've just noticed that, yeah, with, painting from photographs, you kind of have to do that. Um, in, inject some colors in there that you don't necessarily see in the photo. Um, and if you paint a lot from life, you'll start picking up the differences, like where, you know, what things you you start missing from the photos. Um, it's really subtle stuff. Uh, if, if you're doing really, really simple sketches and mostly focused on values, you're, you're, it, you're probably not gonna notice a difference. Um, okay, so there's my kind of base color, I guess. Um, definitely need some shadows in here, though. I'm going to keep going through the whole thing. And um, But this side, so in the eye, I don't see those warms. There's definitely something coming in from the side that's warming up this shadow, and that is not warming up the inside of the eye socket. So I'm going to have to add some, some more cool notes to that mixture. Maybe like that. Maybe even more. Um, by the way, uh, David's course is on presale right now. Yes. Oh, that's too dark. Yeah, David Finch's course is on presale. Yeah, it's not. I guess it's not like available to watch. Yeah, we 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 ended up doing a three month presale. We don't usually do that, but um, I guess. We we're so excited. He's done filming it. We're just editing it now. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to yourself 15 years ago? Um, oh, geez. 15. How old was I at 15? I was 20. Um... Huh. It was about art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sketch more from imagination. <laughs> no, seriously. Like I, I would actually say, tell it, tell myself, sketch more from imagination. Um, I just didn't do nearly enough of that. I needed to balance it out. I've, I've trained my brain to, to look and analyze things, um, and not to imagine as much. And it's difficult to untrain that. Uh, you know, it's it's not impossible. I, I I definitely don't put in enough effort to untrain myself. So I'm sure if I if I really made it a goal, part of my career, then I would be able to do it. But it would be nice to just make it part of my like have made it part of my original training. Do you recommend starting with oils to learn color? <sighs> to learn color, I think it doesn't matter which medium it is. I mean, you can start with digital and learn color. Um, I, don't, I don't think it matters which medium you choose, honestly. Um, oil is expensive. It's probably the most expensive medium. So if if you're just starting out and you're, you're having a hard time buying 
you know, educational products like courses and you're choosing between oil versus a course, I would go with the course because you're getting more information and go with, um, go with digital. That's, that's cheaper. If you already have a computer, just get like a, you know, a $200 Cintiq or not Cintiq, tablet, a $100 tablet. They even have like $40 tablets, yeah, yeah, right? They and they're not bad. They're like just as good as the, um, they uh, were 15 years ago. Cynics, for a, for yeah. a, Cynics used one. He's been using the same one for like 15 yeah. or 20 years or something. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. So yeah, so yeah if, if, if you're hard on money, um, yeah, start with the whatever cheaper medium. You don't have to start with oil, which is, it is very expensive. Like I've probably put like maybe $10 worth of oil paint on my palette just now just for this one session. Um, okay, so there's some darker darks around, like for example, under the jaw, it's definitely darker than like the stuff on the side of the, the, the face. So let's get that, and it's very cold as well. It's pretty green actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push it. Not that green, but you know. Mm. warm it up what are the best alternatives for oils if you paint in a small unventilated room uh, the best alternative for oils <laughs> uh, what do you think I don't I don't know I've gouache. Been oils. gouache yeah gouache I mean it yeah but it's dries quick is it better than than digital <laughs> um is it better than acrylic well if somebody wants to paint traditionally i mean acrylic or gouache those are the only two right it's the only two options people like, have no there's yeah. others there's like egg tempera i guess so there's casein mm. but i don't know like i don't have enough um experience with all of those to to really tell you a good answer sorry um personally like if i were to choose the you know, a f the the mediums that I want to be good at, I would choose oil, gouache, digital, and like pencil, like charcoal graphite pencil. And that's probably it. I wouldn't. I mean, I I enjoy looking at watercolor, but I've never had the desire to get good at it. I don't know why, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's my opinion. I don't know if I need to. I'll just put in a few dots in there just to be able to judge that value. Um, cool. Um, next question. Um, what if somebody is colorblind and wants to be an artist? <laughs> God, you, you guys are just trying to like. <laughs> I, 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 I think it's a good question. I, I guess so. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, I, there are plenty of artists that just do value. Yeah. You know. The most important part of color is value. And when you're colorblind, you still see the value. So you're fine. You can you can do limited palette um, within the range that you're seeing, and you'll be fine. Um, you obviously have a disadvantage to, to doing certain color ranges. Like, you won't be able to just see it, I don't think, right? No, <laughs> you just, no. Um, but there are plenty of amazing paintings that yeah, are just yeah, you, black and white. And... Yeah, because if your values are off, it doesn't work. So... Yeah. You're fine. You can still be a, an amazing artist and be colorblind. Yeah, yeah. Scott Flanders made an entire career. I mean, he doesn't use color that much. In his... Wait, is he colorblind? No, he's not colorblind. Oh. A bunch of his art is. You know, oh yeah, it's just it, monochrome. It's still, yeah, monochrome. Monochromatic. And it's yeah, looks good. Yeah. So I'm getting a new brush for the for the blue in here, just because I know I'm gonna have to come back to the warms, and I don't want to clean my brush too much. I'm just saving a little bit of time. Um. Let me know when you want another question. Go ahead, just keep asking. 
Hmm. Um, how do you train your eyes to see color? Is it better to squint? Uh, with color, no, not really. With color, it's not better to squint. It the the squinting advice is more for shapes and for big light patterns. Um, for color, I actually I think I, I like open my eyes uh, to see the the subtleties better. Um, so yeah, no, 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 you, you don't. You're not supposed to squint. When do you decide that your painting is truly finished? You, you never really need to decide. Painting is never What's finished. What's the point? What's the point of deciding on if it's finished or not? I don't know. What? <laughs> it's like that's like a romantic art question. Like, is it done? Is it perfect? Does it speak what's in my soul? Nope, probably not. Is a painting? Are you are you done with it? You still want to work on it? Um, if if not, you're done with it. If it's a if it's a job, and you have to turn it in, and it has to, you know, you got a specific, you know, objective. The question there is: Is it good enough for my for the job I'm trying to do? Uh, if not, keep working, keep improving it. All right. I'm not trying to like draw too much. I just want like notes of color initially to be able to judge like the the harmonies. Okay, I, I got to jump into that skin tone though. Um, put this down. Since oils are so expensive, is it worth saving leftover oil paint or from your painting session? And how would you go about doing it? Yeah, I, you could. Um, let me see if I could go grab. I'll be right back. Take me 10 seconds. So there's these things. What's better, this one? There. Yeah. So there's these things that are airtight. They seal. Um, you put your oil paint. I mean, I actually use this for plain air paint. I brought this thing and then I sealed it. And then if I painted any time within that same week, I would open it and still be wet. Some colors dry a lot faster than others, and so those you might have to scrape off and re put a new, you know, fresh. Uh, squeeze on there uh, but others will stay wet for a while if you really want to make sure that they stay wet for a long time clove I don't know why I brought it you can't see anything on it. it's a really good old bottle this will last you probably your whole life it's clove oil um, you could put like a like a little dab of it into like the corners of your palette when it's sealed and it'll keep keep it wet some people put it onto the actual mixtures of the paint and it'll stay wet for like a month um, I personally don't know the uh, archivalness of that. I, I, I was told it's fine, it won't crack your paint, but it might. I don't know. So do some research on that before you start pouring clove oil. You really just need like the tiniest amount. Don't, don't like pour it on. You have to get like an eyedropper. In fact, does this one have an eyedropper? No, it doesn't. You gotta get like an eyedropper and actually like drop on it tiniest amount. Is that the only bottle of clove oil you've ever bought? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And you've been an artist for. Oh yeah. 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 I've, yeah. yeah. I've, I've used. I mean, I'm actually surprised. I think I've spilled it. That's why I've actually. It's like down here. I think I spilled it. I was like, oh crap. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason. It, it's, it's yeah. All... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, how, how much was that bottle of clove oil? I don't. Know. I bought that like 20 years ago. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Maybe more than 20 years ago. Um. Okay. Um, have you ever imitated Nikolai Fetchin? <laughs> like with my body language? Yeah, yeah. No. Well, he was part of a uh, question last week. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great question. <laughs> yeah, you should go watch it. We just. Shoot. Um, Nikolai Fetchin. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've done a few 
actual master studies of his stuff. I did like a hand study. I've done a face, um, but not like not as much as I've studied Morgan Weisling. Um, just a few, a few, yes. I, I, and I've obviously I've I've looked at I've several books of his stuff, and I've just like stared at it for hours, <laughs> just trying to like figure out stuff. But master studies, I've only done a few. Beep. All right, so now mix, trying to mix like a, there's obviously a lot of colors here. I'm gonna try to mix a few different types. So like this highlight area is way different from like this half tone area, like not even, yeah, like very, very different. So, and then also when I get into here, some of these yellows also very different and then the neck very different. So. I'm gonna try to just start with some kind of base, maybe. Maybe I'll just start with the forehead. That's an easy shape. Um, and so I'll start with these half tones, maybe like a pink and then like an orangey peach. Ooh, let's go with this Clint Rose. See how let's see what that gets me. Whoa, that is really hot pink. Oh my god, that's like, that's like that, Barbie bubble gum. Is that Quinn Rose and yeah, what else? And white. Wow. Crazy. That is a bright color. <laughs> I'm not gonna use that. What if you combine the other two, white and? Oh, just combine uh, alizarin in? Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. Um, okay, I have to wash my brush, so it's not. So it's a true test. But yeah, again, my my daughter's name is Quinn Rose, so. Hmm. Now I like this color. I feel like yeah, it's more red. How much of your painting is this experimenting process? Um, of colors? Yeah, yeah. Just putting stuff together and seeing what happens. Yeah, see, it's, it's more it's more red. Right. This is much more of like a, a more towards violet. Mm. Yeah, very different. Um, how much is experiment? Oh, jeez. Um, I mean, not that much. Point one percent. Sometimes I'll just do a bunch of experimenting. I'll spend a day just like experimenting with gessoing canvas um actually shoot now i want to show you something <laughs> sorry i have a bunch of these that i made um i've, I've used most of them now but i don't know if you could see how do i show this texture the best I think it's slightly, like more. Oh, there. Uh, God. You can kind of get an idea. There, you can kind of see the texture. You gotta get that lighting perfectly. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's better. Oh, there you go. There, boom! Look at that. You can totally see the the texture on that. Um. And then you know, I have another one which is not too extreme. It's more, it's flat, but then I got like a few areas of really extreme texture. And so I made like a bunch of these panels where I just kind of like put gesso and and like some paste or I forgot what it's called on there. And I just, I, I, I created a bunch and then I used them and I had a lot of fun using those panels. I, it, it makes my brushwork a lot more interesting. And so yeah, that's experimentation. I, I, I do that. <clears throat> okay, so this obviously is too pink. Gotta add a little more yellow. Yeah, it's too too saturated. Um, well, actually, you know what? This this is actually a pretty good match to some of these half tones in here. So I'll probably go super super saturated in this version. Um, simplify these shapes. Do you think that going to university to learn art and getting a degree is important? No. And how do you develop a style when you, and, and when do you know it's the right time to move away from the basics of, of drawing and how to bend them? So I guess- Wait, the, what was the second question? This is, it's a two part question. Um, how do you develop a style and when do you know to move away from the basics of drawing? How do you develop a style? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so we, Marshall and I, we do a podcast called Draftsman. We did a whole episode on art parents. And your art parents are like the artists you choose to be influenced by. Um, 
I would go listen to that episode if you want the, the answer to that. Um, it's, it's a better, you know, it's a full episode on it. So, um, But essentially, you're going to choose people you study, and you get to choose that. And you're going to decide what you want to pull, what information, what, what, what specific trait or quality about this artist that you're studying that you like and you want to choose as your parent. Do you want to acquire and you want to make it part of your style and then you just keep you study them and you you do you do drawings or paintings where you're trying to imitate that um, and and then you choose another one and then you take a little bit of something else from that other person and you keep doing that um, until you pretty much have your own unique combination Trying to get a good range here, so like this is more greenish, kind of a gray. How does colors and photos? Or how does color and photos differ from uh, color in real life? Um, it's just not as much information, and I'll, of course, it depends on the camera. Every camera will tree color differently you know but yeah you, 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 the, the camera processes the color and it has to simplify it somehow um, it obviously doesn't have as much information as light you know reality uh, so yeah it's just more simplified when you were a student were there any concepts that you found particularly difficult Hmm. That's a good question. Um, hmm. everything was difficult <laughs> just it, I guess for me it's something that wasn't as fun was more difficult right it's it's it feels more challenging when you're not enjoying it and so I guess like I didn't like perspective very much <laughs> sorry Marshall um, well that's how you have them teaching the course <laughs> yeah, yeah that's why I wouldn't want to teach the course <laughs> yeah. uh, um, but what else? What were there? I didn't enjoy. Uh, shoot, what did what did I not enjoy? I, I I enjoyed so much of it. It's it's hard to pick stuff. Um, hmm. I don't know. Just what what about you? <laughs> I I I'm horrible at uh, edges. Edges are definitely something I struggle with. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident in everything else but everything edges. yeah girls no she's <laughs> no, <laughs> embarrassing me and <laughs> embarrassing you you can just in front of all my friends and <laughs> uh yeah uh, edges for sure uh there was something that uh marshall was saying about justin sweet where he was saying he asked marshall or J marshall asked justin sweet what he was working on and justin said uh edges it's it's, it's always edges I'm, ne I'm never not working on edges he says he i think I might be wrong, but what Justin was saying was that edges are the most important thing um, that somebody could be working on. Yeah, I mean, everyone's got their opinion of what, like, the most important thing is. Yeah. Um, it it kind of depends on your style, what your most important thing is. Um, but, yeah. I, I mean, edges are super important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think edges become more important as you become more advanced. Oh, yeah. They're, sure. they're not really important at all when you're a beginner um, because you can get away with just sharp edges everywhere you know like I haven't thought about edges at all yet in this painting I'm just thinking about shapes and colors and values um, and then if I was to actually do a finished painting of this a similar thing then yeah of course yeah I'd have to be thinking about like forms of like 
how like what are the subtle transition plane transitions in there and how does that translate into an edge now i'm not thinking about that at all and and i think that edges are the like maybe he means that edges are the most important thing for like a professional piece right, um, right. in in making something look really awesome versus something to look really good right like good versus awesome there's a lot of edge work in there that right, needs right. to happen well and if you look at his drawings they're all very messy so he can fix a lot of you know the not clean parts of his drawings in his in his edges and in his actual painting I'm trying to decide what color to make this highlight <laughs> highlight area. I'm gonna, I mean, I guess color study. I'm just gonna experiment. I'm gonna go a little more bluish green in that. Boop, boop, yellow. Is it possible to buy certain lectures on Proca 2.0 or do you have to buy the whole course? Um, we, yeah, right now it's, we only sell courses. You can't purchase lessons, um, so yeah. Maybe in the future, um, but not here now. But you can see, guys, how I'm really pushing that, right? Like I'm, I'm experimenting with that, with that, how much I can push that color to a green. At what age did you find art as a career? Um, as a, it's difficult. It's a transitional. There's transitions in there, right? So, um. When I was like, when I was a teenager, I, I, I had some commissioned portraits, but does that mean I have a career? Just because I had a few commissions? Probably not. Um, I guess I could define a career as like the point when I could support myself with just my, the thing I do. And so that would probably be like 20, when I was 26. Was that the question, the age? Yeah. The age, yeah. So 26, I guess, is when I kind of became yeah. professional because I was able to support myself, got myself a house. Like, I didn't have to live with my parents anymore. When did you decide you wanted to be a professional artist? Oh, I decided, like, when I was, like, 12 or 13 or something like that. Yeah. What kind of easel do you use outdoors? A Soltec. I can grab it. Yeah, you can grab it. I don't know how old it is. Do you think they still sell them? Yeah, yeah, Soltec's still, still in business. It's an expensive easel, though. I, I, <laughs> if you, yeah, you, it's not something I would say, like, yeah, if you're just going to dabble in plain air, go ahead and get this uh, Soltec easel. Nah, I, you know, start off with something cheap, and then if you're really into it, then you can move on to a Soltec. It's the Soltec. I mean, it's not really that, uh, that, um, uh, what, do you, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the freaking word? <laughs> it's not pretty impressive just by looking at it. The, the really great thing about this thing is it's, it's, really quick to set up. I could set this thing up in like 45 seconds. Um, it, like a French easel that, you know, you gotta screw things in and all that, like it's, I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those things also break too. Yeah. Well, Soltex can break too. If you get water into like the ball bearing area, they could, they can uh, stop coming out. Um, but, but yeah. It, better i had that for i still have it that was the the you know the main easel i got when i, I started plein air painting and i still have it and it still works great so if you take good care of it you're fine it'll it'll last you a really long time so down here under the jaw i'm seeing more purpley notes and i honestly sorry guys like it's really challenging to to display color correctly on a stream. So I, I don't know if you guys are actually seeing everything the way I'm seeing it. It looks um, pretty close from, yeah, close-ish. Close-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Boop. 
Um, Is there another question? Yeah, I'm looking right, for Yeah. Um, hey, absolute beginner here. I want to start with the hobby of painting with gouache and ink, but overwhelmed uh, by it all. Any tips on how to start? Should I focus on anything particular? Plants, humans, colors, etc. Any any course recommendations? Um, gouache and ink? Ooh. Ooh. I've never... Hmm. I don't know about courses for gouache and ink. We don't have those. Uh, maybe Watts Atelier has some gouache stuff. Watts Atelier has a ton of gouache stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure Jeff has someone teach gouache in his school uh, online. Bob Watts. Bob Watts. Oh yeah, that's yeah, great. But, yeah, but, take yeah. Bob's gouache class. Yeah, he's one of the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> living teachers. Yeah. I think. Oh yeah, sure. So lucky to be in San Diego and he's teaching. Have you taken his class? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Which ones? Uh, composition. That was good. Um, I took composition with him too. Um, I, th I think he, they had like a cinematic storytelling kind of course too. I really enjoyed. Nice. Um, yeah. He also gives handouts that are that are very valuable. So obviously I'm going for a very high chroma study in this. Um, pretty influenced by what I'm seeing in front of me on my TV, which is super saturated, versus looking at the iPad in front of me, which is much more accurate. So uh, probably not good, but in the next one that I do, I'm gonna do a few, probably a few more quicker ones. This, this is also actually serving as like a little warm up for me as well. Um, just getting getting into the painting mode. This is for the uh, Proco Challenge. Somebody's asking, can a potential winner of the Proco Challenge draw something as simple as one figure or portrait? Um, potentially. Potentially. Of course, potentially. Yeah. But remember, I mean, you're, there's a judge. You know, I'm not the judge. You, uh, whatever the person, you, whoever imp is the most impressive uh, for Carla <laughs> is going to be the winner. But, you know, of, of course, we also have um, we have like 20 prizes, right? 20 different... We have 20 uh, winners. A winner. We have 20 winners. So, yeah, your chances of winning are actually pretty high unless like 10,000 people apply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, some of the sponsors are giving away prizes only to people who uh, did traditional work, right? Like, if you did digital, they're not going to pick you because, for example, like Trakel, right? Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they, Trakel has a prize of some art supplies, and it's like, you know, it's oil painting supplies. So they're not going to pick a digital artist to give oil painting stuff to because they might not need it. So they're going to pick someone who uses traditional medium to re award that to. Um, so, yeah. They're, look at the whole list and see, well, who do you want to impress? <laughs> but yeah, potentially anyone could win. We also have a whole category of uh, imp um, impromptu winners. Is that what we call them? Yeah, yeah. impromptu winners. Impromptu winners, winners where we just like randomly come up with more winners <laughs> yeah. we're just like oh cool this one's so funny we think it should win and uh, they, they get the comedy award or the wtf award wtf award we're yeah. just like so ridiculously outrageous that you have to win something <laughs> yeah so anything could win um yeah if it stands gotta, out yeah, you, you yeah. gotta stand out that's the big one yeah in some way you really gotta stand out or you could just use the challenge as a way to grow as an artist and not care about the prize. I think that's the real purpose of it, right? That is really the purpose of it, um, because well, and, you know, and if most you, people aren't going to win. Yeah, absolutely. Just naturally, if we have twenty winners but hundreds of people try, most people are not going to win. And those people that don't win still need to get value out of it. This has to be valuable for everybody, um, and that value is the. You know the the participation in a in a thing like almost like it's a real job, um, being part of a community and like, you know, 
practicing practicing a real thing well and if you become a better artist you're going to make more money from becoming a better artist than you would ever from actually winning any of the prizes right oh yeah Oh, yeah, so, so you, you'll, you'll gain per may, you'll gain more by you know obviously becoming by, a better be, by learning by learning yeah <laughs> you'll gain more by learning that's good um shoot i forgot what color i was mixing oh i think i needed to get that's some more darks that is plain it needed to be darker um what do you think of the fact that i got an ad for ai generated paintings when i clicked on this live stream Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Stan is a big fan of AI. <laughs> nah, uh, probably not for the reason people think. I'm not a fan of AI to replace artists. I'm a fan of AI because I think it, it can um, enhance artists' work. It could make us better artists. And I think that's going to be more likely what's going to happen s like in the short term, where um, AI is, is just like another tool for us to use. Um, and it'll just make us better. Um, eventually, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, whatever. I don't have control of it. Um. Is there a water course, watercolor course uh, being considered? I have talked to a watercolorist, but we, uh, it's not in production. So. Um. The suit, like possibly if a third, like some artist comes and so it has like a course already made and they want to put it on our platform, that's probably the only way it'll happen soon. Otherwise, no, we, we, we won't have like a Proco original watercolor course anytime soon. If you are a watercolor art artist. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a, yeah, yeah. Totally uh, reach out. Yep. Yeah. Do you have any tips on staying on top of personal health uh, while in the middle of an intensive session? I tend to forget little things like staying hydrated. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, make it part of your schedule. Oh, shoot, that was an ugly choice of color. Um, make it part of your schedule. Put it in your calendar. Make a notification. Um, I have a watch. It tells me to get up. <laughs> uh, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I w one great thing about uh, swimming is that I have to reserve a lane at the YMCA or nearby here, and it's like, well, I have an appointment, <laughs> so I have to go. Um, sometimes I miss it, but but most of the time I, I make it. And well, if you miss it, you have to. I have to pay. You have to pay some money if, too. If I yeah. miss my reservation, I have to pay fifteen dollars, and so <laughs> so I don't <laughs> want to miss it. Um, so yeah, there's like a. There's pain in not, you know, not going to my appointment, and that's good. I'm glad they make me pay if I miss my appointment. I'm actually like, it's like thank you for keeping me accountable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of weird. Huh? Yeah. So notice I'm not painting lips. I'm just painting colors. Um, yeah. um, what are your thoughts on unsolicited feedback? Hmm. Yeah, I when I was a student, I really I didn't really like it. I was like, oh, you know, sometimes I people would give me feedback that I like, I didn't care about their specific feedback. Like I didn't want to hear it from them because I didn't like I don't think they they knew what I wanted to learn, um, and it was really just kind of annoying because most of the time that feedback is like an opinion, where people would say like, oh, you know, you should uh, make your colors brighter. I was like, why? Why? Because you like bright colors? Um, and so I kind of just, yeah, I found that a little annoying. Um, but, you know, eventually you just kind of realize that people people just want to actually just interact with you most of the time. That's, like, they want to be part of the creation of art, and they're not, they're not artists themselves. Um, and that's why they're giving you feedback. And so then that's kind of like, oh, okay, I could, I'll let you. I'll let you have your fun. I'd say just don't listen to them if you don't want to. Yeah, well, listen to them. Just kind of, you know, be nice and just be like, oh, cool, yeah, thank you. And 
and then don't don't actually listen to them like take their advice um, <laughs> Um, which smartwatch do you have? This is a Garmin, um, uh, geez, runner, what is it? Garmin, uh, Forerunner or something like that. And it's the, I don't know what the number is, but it's, it's like the 420, 450, I don't know. I use it mostly to track my, my swimming <laughs> and check the time. <laughs> and it tells me to get up if I'm sitting for too long. Um, which is nice, actually. Is it waterproof? It is waterproof. I swim in it. Oh, right. Makes sense. Yeah. It has to be. I shower in it, swim in it, everything. How do you choose your background uh, main color when you are painting a portrait? Ooh, background. I didn't even think about background. Thank you for reminding me. Holy crap. How did I not add background in here? Good job. <laughs> yeah, what? How am I? What? I'm an idiot. Yeah, you sure are. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm basing all of these colors off of a white background, which is not. So you know, I don't have to fill in the whole canvas black or, or whatever color I choose the background to be. Um, I could just put like a, a few notes around it, and it'll it'll help me see the relationships. So okay, let's let's get some colors. So what do I think? I'm feeling. Uh, I'm feeling a little olive, like really dark olive back there. Um, let's, let's see how that, oh, there, I kind of, I think I mute it down now. Let's see how that works. to make it a little more interesting. Switch it to a little more purpley down here. Um, I think adding single lessons to favorites would be a useful option. Sometimes I have, I Wait, walk- Wait, what? Single what? Sometimes adding favorites to single lessons. Uh, some favorites like favoring it, like bookmarking that lesson or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we do want to add like a bookmarking feature. Um, that's that's definitely in the in the list of things we're we want to add. Um, it's just you know obviously it's not a giant priority. At, at some point though. Yeah. We, we have a giant point. list of. We things. have a really big list. Uh, you can't see stuff on the roadmap. Right. You can, yeah. I don't think that, like, little features like that are, or maybe, no, no, I don't think we added that one, but we, we to the roadmap, we added more, like, just really big, big features. Yeah. Will Proco ever have live model streams? Live mo like a, like a stream of a model posing? Yeah. <laughs> um, probably not. No, nah, probably not. Uh, We're gonna have a tool to yes, um, figure draw from Proco directly the the Proco website. Yep, it's like a timer tool, and it's going to take things, take model packs from model packs that you own. Yeah, already. model packs you you've you you've purchased, or you can upload your own custom photos and then use the tool as well. So if you already have a library of photos that you want to use the tool with, you'll be able to, to do that. Um, Slu has a question. All right, hey, Slu. Um, how much effort does it take for Stan to groom and trim his beard in a week? It's a two-part question. So I'll, I have I'll... to think about the growth. So if I don't think about it, it doesn't grow. Yeah. Um, so it takes a lot of effort. Yeah, but it grows really quickly when you. Yeah, there. if I think about it, I just have to think about it for like, fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes depends on how. Like this took me probably like forty-five minutes to think about. Yeah. Um, 
I wanted to look extra good for you guys for the stream. Hmm. So I, I, I dedicated 45 minutes this morning. This took me about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and then also, are you constantly squinting for this little painting to see values and shapes? No, I'm actually, I'm not trying to see too many, like, value. Like, the values are pretty easy for me to see now. I don't need to squint. Um, I'm actually trying to find colors. I'm trying to get more accurate colors in here. So I don't squint to see color. Um, I, I open my eyes to see color. How long did you study perspective? Uh, like one class, <laughs> like like a like a semester, like one semester. I, but you know, and then off and on, just kind of I had to be thinking about perspective as I was like figure drawing and stuff. But as far as just like going in there and seriously thinking about perspective, I think I only took one class on perspective. Hello, Stan. Hi. Having having studied at the Watts Atelier, uh, do you think what do you think the largest difference between the Watts and the Grand Central Atelier is? Ooh, well, I haven't studied at Grand Central, so uh, I don't know if well, I can uh, answer that. But. Site size versus the Riley method, right? Yeah, but I mean, every school teaches something different. So it's if you're talking about the material that you are. The, School is not just about the stuff you learn at the school. There's so much more to a school. And so when I say I haven't studied there, it's it's not just because, you know, I, I can't answer that question because I haven't experienced it. I don't know what kind of community is there. Like, are people close? Um, but they probably are. I mean, it's a great school as far as I know. Um, but yeah, if just as far as information, um, yeah, it's site size. It's great school great yeah. school they're they're very classical as far as i know yeah um like at watts a quick sketch will be three hours a qu no uh, watts a quick sketch is, is two minutes oh yeah, yeah. sometimes sorry, sorry. one minute yeah um a long drawing is three hours at watts yeah three hours is a long drawing but at the grand central atelier uh, isn't three hours a quick sketch a quick sketch is three hours so it's like their shortest drawing is the longest well Watts, the longest drawing is actually are 15 hours because we there are classes where you dedicate five weeks to a single drawing, so five times three. Um, and so that's the longest, but most of the time, like 95% of the drawings you'll, long drawings you'll do are gonna be three hours. Where at Grand Central, the shortest you do is three hours and the longest you do is, I don't know, 100, I don't, right? 100 hours, something? Uh, yeah, it's I like mean, semester, a whole semester. Yeah. And yeah, it's like all you do that semester, I think. But again, I, I didn't study there, so I'm, I'm not the best one to, to comment on that. Probably, I might have just said all completely wrong things. It depends on your goal, I think is the question, is the answer. Like, yeah. yeah. They're both, they both have very big advantages. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here, you can have this one. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Um, how much medium do you use with your oil paint? I'm not using medium today. I, I typically will use walnut oil or linseed oil. Um, right now, I just have a bucket of turpentine. Uh, I mean, it's not filled. It's it's just a little bit at the very bottom there. <laughs> you can't see anything, but it's like pure black. But anyway, yeah, it, oh, there you can kind of see a little bit splash around at the bottom there. It's turpentine. Well, not it's not real turpentine. It's a, a Gamsol by Gamblin. It's odorless, um, a little bit better as far as I know for your health. <laughs> so. All right, I want to finish this one up. I feel like most most of it is in there. I kind of understand what the colors are, but I just still have like these little spots that I just got to fill in. Um, so, okay, plane of the nose, what color? It's, it's purple. This highlight is more of this. Let's get it in. Are there any plans to make more model packs available to sell? I would love to see some packs based on themes, action using tools, running, dynamic angles, etc. Yeah, I mean, I've, I keep wanting to to do more model packs, but it's just like courses are just such a higher priority 
and there, there's other there's great people on like art station that sell model packs as well and probably on gumroad and and there, yeah there's so many available now that it's like i feel like uh we we provide more value um by making more courses so i don't know i mean we, we definitely want to there is a clamoring in the community for a christian towel reference pack Oh, there's clamoring in my head for it too. <laughs> yeah, everyone wants that. Everybody wants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you gonna do it? Uh, yeah. You're a teacher. Yeah, technically, so I could do you it. Could you could technically <laughs> log into your teacher account and publish it, and I would not know for at least a few hours that you <laughs> just did that. Yeah, I totally could. Um, and it sells a million dollars. Yeah. Uh, everyone has it. A million dollars. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's it, it's going to be one, one, one pack is going to be a million dollars. Oh, really? Yeah. So. We'll, well just... that would be the way to go. It's a very specialty like type of. Yeah. Type of product. So. So what was the time that you felt imposter syndrome most intensely? Uh, live streaming. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good answer. Yeah, I mean, live streaming, it really puts you in your place. Yeah. Do you feel like you paint better when you're not being watched? <laughs> yes. It's not even live streaming. It's having a camera on is... is uh, very difficult to work with I mean at least for me it's like I just I draw totally different when I'm not trying to draw for somebody I'm not very differently I mean I just I draw better I draw better I paint better it's everything is just better when I'm not painting for something when I'm just my head is purely in creation mode and not in like teacher or performance mode um, I, th I mean I guess that's normal but some people don't have that issue Ah, that was horrible. Such a wrong value there. Um... How do you study values for portrait drawings? Um, you you have to think about the values. <laughs> you how do you study values for a portrait drawing? It's the same way you study values for anything. Uh, it, it doesn't matter that it's a portrait. You have to. Um, I would say you start by simplifying your values to like to two, right? It's kind of what I did in the beginning of this painting. I was I had my light shape and I had my shadow shape, and I, I, I split those up. Then I started in with my half tones, and I started thinking, okay, I got like this darker half tone area, and I have like spots of it everywhere, and then I got this like lighter half tone area, and, and there's differences in the hue, but it's roughly the same value. And then I started adding like these really dark darks in like the background. And then I just started adding like little highlights. And so I'm introducing more values slowly um, to my painting to make it complicated. Not complicated, to, 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 <laughs> to slowly complicate it. Start very simple, two values, then three values, and four, and then five. And then usually five for something like this is enough for, for like a, a longer finish, more finished drawing, you're probably going to get into like six seven eight values just because of like the subtle transitions in in your in your half tones and your sh you know shadows so uh, gosh i feel like it's a nice painting i really, really like it thanks 
What am I missing? It's definitely the ear is like weird. It's uh, it's like orange instead of pink. Mm. So at this point, now it's like it's like the, it's covered up. Like the whole the whole uh, there's no canvas left over for me to cover. Now I have to analyze what I have and see if I need to shift anything. Um, maybe a little dark in here. Not too much. I'm not paying detail. I just want to make sure that it feels like the colors are correct in that area. Um, obviously, I didn't do the glasses because they're so thin. Like, if I squint, I don't see actually the bottom rim of the glasses. And so that's not an important enough shape for me to, to, to get in there. Is there any advantages to learning the Riley method for figure drawing versus learning the force method and vice versa? The force method? Is so, that yeah, Mike Matisse. Yeah. Um, well, they're, they're both tools. Yeah, right? they're both just tools. You, you, you know, study the concepts, the, pr the, the major principles behind those, and you could use whatever tool. Um, they're, you know, or they're, they're techniques, right? Riley is a technique. Uh, Mike Matesi has a specific technique, but they're both based off of like a gesture. They're both trying to show the pose and whatever based on very specific principles that never change. Um, so you have to understand the purpose of both of those. And then you, you can study both and, and use them however you want. And I, I don't think you should be tied to a specific, no. you know, style of drawing. You should... Uh use all different techniques you can. Um, and if you want to learn the Riley method for figure drawing, what courses and books do you recommend? If I want to learn Riley method? Oh, geez, books. Oh, my God, there. Frank Riley has a PDF out there somewhere. I think yeah, somebody... there, there's websites that kind of co that have compiled a bunch of Riley stuff. Um, I know Eric Gist on his blog. He has a few links to to some Riley stuff. And uh, uh, I can't remember the name. Yeah, I can't remember any of these. Um, <laughs> uh, but look up Eric Gist's blog. He's got links, and then from there you can probably find your path to more stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the Watts Atelier does a great job explaining the Riley. Yeah, Riley actually, method. they probably have a course. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Go go to Watts.com. I think you can purchase like a Riley class individually. Yeah. And uh, Tim Gula has some videos on Proco that are, I, I think oh, they're yeah. I think they're good. If you want a free video on Riley, Tim Gula, Proco YouTube channel, Riley method. <laughs> yeah. Beep, beep. All right. Uh, good enough. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, for a color study, it's definitely good enough. I should probably just move on. Try another one. If I ever manage to decide it's finished, as somebody said. Um, if you were painting from a live model, would you do uh, study sketches before moving to color? I guess. I guess. Wait, it, what? I guess they're asking, would you do compositional studies before? Um, I I do sometimes. Yeah, certainly. I'll, I'll, there's occasions where I'll... Like, if it's like a, a three-hour drawing of a figure, I probably won't. But, you know, if it's a 15-hour, I will, for sure, think about the composition. So, anyway, yeah, there, there's there's that. Um, take a little breather. I like it. It's a good painting. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Give me a hard question while I'm not painting. How's your day going? I'll do another one. I'll do another one after this. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, I was gonna do. Uh, I was gonna do one of these that. Um, no, what was that? That had the the light, right? The super hot orange light. <laughs> That'll be interesting. That's good. Yeah. That's a good portrait. I'll probably for for this, what I'll probably end up doing is not going. Uh, high chroma in in these in this shot in the light area here 
Because see how these are bright colors. They're super saturated. Um, if I do this one, I would probably go a little more gray down here so that the orange, the saturation of the orange actually stands out. So I'll do another one like right here. Um, okay. Um, what do you think people can learn uh, how to draw after the age of 20 to take art as a profession? What do I think they'll learn? Uh, yeah, I guess. Wait, I'm what, sorry. Um, what do you think people can learn how to draw at the after the age of 20 to take art as a profession? So I guess they're asking, what do you recommend people study uh, if they're you know older than 20? Older than 20. The same thing I'd recommend for a 16-year-old. Uh, Twenty. If you're suggesting 20 is somehow old, um, that's the tr the real advice here. Is like you're extremely young. <laughs> Yeah, you have a very Tons long time, time. Yeah. to get good at this. I mean, obviously, it doesn't feel like that. When you're 20, you feel like you have a few months to get a job and become an adult, and and you got all this pressure from everyone around you, your parents, whoever, to like be to an adult, become successful. Yeah, right. Um, and I, yeah, it's it's a lot of pressure. I I know I was there. I've, I've been 20 before. Um, and he's still stuck at 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're literally the oldest you've ever been. So. Whoa. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> but, yeah, I know that you feel like you're old and you don't have enough time to get good, but you do. Imagine what it's like for the 40-year-olds, for the 50-year-olds listening, that are in the same boat where they're like oh i remember when i used to draw and i loved it and i hate my job right now and i kind of want to switch my career to drawing or painting or whatever like imagine the place they're in like you have 20 30 years on them right like you can get good enough to be a professional i would say in like if you really go for it five three. years yeah were you gonna say three three to five well three to five yeah yeah, yeah three, three to five, five. Years. you could it's possible it's difficult. You have you, to work hard. You have to really, really, really work hard. And you you have to make sacrifices for that to actually happen in that short amount of time. But it's certainly possible. Um, I was talking to Jose Vega. He, he did a video on, on Proco about con, uh, background art. He, he's, he was the lead background artist on Castlevania, the Netflix show, for a long time. And, uh, he I think he got started in art later in life, like 25, 20, you know. You know, I, I, he might have been even in his 30s or something. How do I lock it? I got it. Um, but yeah, Jose. Um, That's so much better. Uh, having. I don't know. Yeah, I've tilted it because there's glare when it's there. I can't see the colors yeah. at all. Um, um, does that work? It actually does. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, Hang right here. <laughs> cool. Um, so some people are going to cringe at what I'm about to do. <laughs> and I am sorry that you feel this way. I thought you were scraping your painting. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you I was like oh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? Um, yeah, I'm sorry that you feel this way, but if I have these colors on my palette, covering up my whole palette, I'm going to create the same painting again. I'm going to use the same colors. So I, I need to make room for a completely new set of color mixtures. I know. But really, it's not that much. Like, look, all that stuff that I just scraped, that's it. Maybe, like... Thirty dollars. Yeah, thirty, sixty dollars worth, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like some people, like imagine like a, a giant painting. Like this is like a, like a highlight on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <It's> crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really not that much. It, it's the uh, alizarin or the cadmiums you have to uh, keep an eye out for. Those are the really expensive ones. You know, the real waste of paint would be if I kept that on there and I didn't practice truly practice color another color study because now I'm not learning as much as if I scraped it and did a clean clean new mixtures and really explored my colors that's a more a bigger waste uh, I took a I, workshop with uh, Joseph Zdorovich once and he said always paint like you have a lot of paint yeah. always overuse paint 
this is glass, by the way. It's glass and I just have a piece of newsprint under the glass. That's why it's so easy. You can get a razor blade. I got a bunch of razor blades, but this is good enough for now. Um, yeah, glass is the, like my favorite palette by far because it's so easy to clean and I could put whatever color I want underneath. It's not actually thirty or forty dollars in paint. No, no, it was like where people actually. Yeah, yeah people were asking. It's not. It's no. like less than a. That little the amount I scraped. That was like a dollar. Less, less than a dollar. Like, no, for a sure. Couple cents. That's like a, no, yeah. it's a few cents. I think. Yeah. I don't know. I've never actually calculated. Tried to calculate. Did you move like trash over there? No. Did it? Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, um, so $30 <laughs> yeah, somebody just said, uh, see, Proko is rich. I can pirate his courses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people do all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty easy. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Karma, man. Yeah. It will come back to you. <laughs> all right. I'll do another one right here. So is this the best one? There, there's a bunch of options. Ooh. I like the ear on this one. On which one? On on this one, it feels like it, it turning oh, is... Oh, and there's a little bit of the other ear too. Yeah, well, the other... I don't other... know if I want that. Well, to me, the the ear... Yeah, people can't see that. Oh, yeah. There's the other ear. Yeah. I probably wouldn't even include that, actually, in my color study. <laughs> it's too small of a detail to even... Well, it feels like it's it gives, a, gives you more tools to turn his head more. Yeah, and I definitely want something different from... Yeah. The one I did. That's pretty much the same, huh? Yeah. It looks completely different on the. Oh. TV. Well, this is also completely different. That's good. But I, I like I like it when he's looking more in like that. I'll, I'll do this one. Okay. Boop, boop. Okay. Ugh. All right, we're gonna go for a different color feel. So actually, maybe, um, should I change some of the colors on here? So I got my orange, I'm, I'm happy with the warms. I was not happy with the range of blues that I was getting. So your cerulean choice. It was right, <laughs> it was right the first time, right? The ultramarine? No, ah. Oh, are we talking about talking about Viridian or no Cerulean? Oh, okay. Cerulean is the blue. No, I did I did I choose the you blue? did you chose oh. Cerulean and I was like all right that's cool. Okay. I'm gonna go with an Ultramarine this time. Yeah, it was the sap that I put in okay, instead okay. of the Viridian. Mm -hmm. Got it. Let's try doing this one. This is Ultramarine. Maybe more of the ochre. And uh, do you listen to songs while drawing? Lo yeah, usually I listen to music, and right now I have to listen to Christian. It's better, right? Yes. yes. Much better. Yeah, I usually listen to like movie soundtracks, stuff like that, like really dramatic stuff that puts me in like a, a mood that makes me feel like I'm special or something. Like Skrillex. <laughs> Skrillex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. Not Tron. Now what? Not Tron. Tron, well, Tron for sure. Tron's my favorite. Tron, Tron is like the best to, music to walk to. Hmm. <laughs> Daft Punk. Uh, yeah, Daft Punk is great. Have you seen their video that they put out late, re recently where they're like, well, we're retiring? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, my, my oh, son, cool. Cooper, he, he watched it and he loved it. Oh. Uh, he, he keeps wanting to watch that video because he likes seeing the, him blow up. <laughs> of course. And then he actually <laughs> likes the song at the end when it, like... It was pretty cool. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would suspect he wouldn't like it. But... Oh, really? Yeah. My son has really good music taste. He, he likes a, a lot of variety. Hmm. He's also a great dancer. Are you a great dancer? No, I'm not. I'm horrible. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I'm not the best judge. Mm. 
Um, what makes a portrait painting interesting? What do you add to change to the original photo reference to make the few viewer feel more emotion? What? What? Um, what? Sorry, can you hear? <laughs> Oh, do you want me to reread it? Yeah, reread oh, okay. it again, sorry. Um, what, do you, uh, what makes a portrait painting more interesting? What do you add slash change to the original photo reference to, for the viewer to feel more emotion? Um, that depends so much on what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, if it's a portrait, um, I'll rarely try to, like, give emotion with, the, with, like, the face, where I'm, like, trying to change the features to give more emotion. I'd rather just choose a better photo reference. Um, I hate working from bad photo reference if I'm doing a portrait. Uh, it's usually more. It's usually color. Actually, this is this is a great time to ask that. Um, it, it's the color that I make more interesting. Um, sometimes cleaning up the values a little more. Oh, I'm sorry. there was me. Um, What about you, Christian? Answer that while I, while I land this. Um, or choose a question for yourself while I focus on the lamp. Let's see. It's too much pressure. Um, I, I think that what makes a portrait painting interesting is it's entirely subjective. Um, like if you look at certain re like hyper realistic painters, then you know, like somebody will just paint uh, an exact like like David Kassan does these beautiful uh, ultra realistic portraits that. The thing that makes it interesting is how ultra real realistic it is. Um, but if you look at somebody like, I don't know, um, like I guess John Singer Sargent, it's more impressionistic and uh, more energetic. And um, you know, the question, what would you add to change the original photo, is like, what is the artist's taste? And you know, it's uh, you know, again, that, that that's an entirely subjective question, I think. Cool. Thanks, Christian. I didn't even actually hear you. Oh. I heard Sargent in there. Yeah, somewhere in there. Um, and I was like, well, he's, he's referencing Sargent. He must yeah. be saying something good. I don't, I don't know if it was. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. some, good somebody. enough for a lay-in. Yeah. Maybe a little wider. The jaw. Ah, God didn't get the lean the tilt that's what makes this interesting is the variety of angles between these two right so I have to beep, make sure I get this tilt um, do you have some specific sketchbooks for charcoal studies and sketches for charcoal I don't use a sketchbook I use a like a, a big newsprint pad um, and then if I want to, if I don't want to use newsprint because I want to do something more finished, then I'll actually just get good paper and like put it on like a board, right? Like for this, I didn't want to do this on newsprint because, you know, I don't want to spend that much time on something on archival. Um, but if it's just a sketch, just newsprint is fine. I guess it is a sketchbook, huh? It's a pad. Well, I guess he's something that you put in your backpack. I don't know if people yeah. make smooth no. newsprint sketchbooks. No, I've never seen that. I don't know if it'd even be good. But yeah, I'm not sure. I guess the point of drawing a newsprint too is that you can draw big and you don't have to worry about wasting paper. Yeah, you got more space. Yeah. And newsprint is so cheap that it's, you know, like a thousand sheets will be like 10 bucks. Wait, really? Yeah. A yeah. thousand sheets is ten dollars? Yeah, if you get like the Paycon from Target. Oh. Is uh, that is that good though? Is yeah. That, like yeah. the rough stuff? No, it's smooth. Really? It it's meant as packing paper, but they oh. like if you go on Target, uh, they sell eighteen by twenty four smooth newsprint that uh what? Yeah, oh. at the Watts Atelier they use it quite a bit. I said, some of the teachers don't like it, but it's, <laughs> okay. it's so cheap and it's good enough that, you know. Who you know, doesn't like it? Which uh, ben. ben. Ben doesn't like yeah, it? Yeah, Ben Why? for sure doesn't like it. What does like he say it. about it? Um, I think it's just, it's like slightly rougher than um, hmm. 
like it, the pads of the pads of fifty. Okay, like, from slightly Arc rougher. That, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I can okay. show. Oh, I, I guess I don't have any on me. But. That's fine. I don't think you'd be able to see the roughness. Um, it just feels slightly different. You know, Ben is drawn for tens of thousands of hours, probably. <laughs> going to say years. For <laughs> millions of <laughs> millions of years. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Ben. Ben is immortal. And, uh, uh, no, but Ben, like Ben, is so uh, sensitive to different. He's talking paper about Ben Young. Ben Young at the Watts Atelier. Um, he's so sensitive to different paper types that he can tell the difference. But if you're a student and you're going to be doing tons and tons of drawings, you're going to throw out, then um, you can get a, a che cheaper paper. Um, I'm actually going to go a slightly different route this time. And instead of just doing tile, little tiles everywhere, I'm gonna scumble in like a big area of light in here and then, and then carve into it a little bit more. So I'm gonna kind of layer, go more of a layer approach. And remember I said I'm gonna go less saturated in this primary light source. And I'm calling this the primary light source and this the secondary light source. Um, even though they're both like direct light, I think he has just like an orange light bulb on that side. It's not bounce light anymore. So, but because this is a much larger area of light, and then this is kind of rim light, but getting into the like, you know, it's it's, not, it's a pretty thick rim light. Um, I'm gonna call this secondary, just so you guys know. Um, so, less saturated, more saturated, and gonna be cold, colder obviously on this side, warmer on this side. Um, so, what's the opposite of Purple. Me? Yeah. You? You're the opposite of purple. No. Are you, are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, green? I don't know. I'm I'm horrible with color. <laughs> yeah, you got in the right range. Yeah. Of, depends on which color you look at, but yeah. let's put that. Let's put yellow in there. Yeah. Um, and let's put green in there. Probably somewhere in between. I have a question. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, Marco Bucci talked about increase how increasing saturation will lower the value. How do you use this knowledge without muddying your values? Increasing saturation will lower the value? Yeah, yeah. Make Does that mean make it darker? Um, that's a good question. I, sus I mean, if you're talking about pigment, typically, yes. Typically, if you're making something higher chroma or, yeah, more saturated, you're going to go for one of these pure chroma color, which are dark, right? But that's not necessarily true not always not always because if he's probably assuming that you're adding white to lower the saturation but that's not always the case you could be going from gray from like a light gray or like a dark gray and you can add yellow to it and that'll increase the saturation and make it lighter because that dark gray is darker than the yellow so it's not always the case, but typically, yeah, if white is going to lower the saturation. So, you know, very often that is true. But what was the question? Um, well, uh, uh, how will increasing your saturation lower the value? How will oh, increasing? No, no, well, uh, Marco talked about how increasing saturation will lower the value. How do you use this knowledge without muddying your values? Um, so essentially, I guess, I guess the question might be how to inject color into your painting without muddying the values. Oh, wait, well, I got the opposite. If you, or do you oh, well, muddying the values. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because you can still have very bright colors and make them light. The highlight I put on the nose and like this note in here, these are very colorful, right? They're obviously not as colorful as like this hot pink over here. This is much higher chroma than this, but it's still colorful. It's not muddying the values. If the value is right, it's, the value is not gonna be muddy. It's when you've got the wrong hues and the wrong, uh, you know, you mix up your warms and your cools that the values kind of don't work anymore. Um, so, did I answer the, is it that sounds, clear it enough? Sounds right. what, it's it's kind of a complicated, I mean, it's, it's, I think that's one of the hardest things of painting is getting correct color relationships to make your, to make it not look muddy. Yeah. I think it's you know incredibly complicated problem to solve, but I, I think your I think your um, explanation is is good. Good enough. Yeah. Um, um, it's all about relationships. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I, I think John Osaro's paintings are great for looking at this stuff, where his, his color choice is really, you know, all over the place, but it, it the relationship, like, he'll use purple for skin tone, and it'll look good because it, its relative relationship to the shadows are, it's, it's uh, solid. Um, you see how different these colors are from these? And it's gonna work. You'll see in the end, it's still gonna work. A very different approach. I'm not going for matching this anymore. Um, I'm going for my own little variety. This is what a study is for, right? So, but it's still gonna harmonize. I'm not gonna muddy my values, what, the way he put it, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's go for another question. Um, Stan, when can we see a, a sketchbook tour of your sketchbook? I don't sketch much in a sketchbook, you guys. I don't think you're gonna enjoy. Oh, okay. I'll show that. This is well. This is not a sketch. This is a printed sketchbook that I was. Well, you, you you've done most of your drawing in a newsprint pad, right? Yes, so. most of my drawing is in a newsprint pad. But I was gonna. I was working on this for a while, like to sell these like sketch. <laughs> it's just, of course, I'm stupid. I'm <laughs> oh, yeah. <not> sure. Oh. <laughs> Should I show, show the last page over here? Oh, yeah. This is the last page. Just a little guy with a little wiener. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, there's my... I think that's my son, yeah. There's a little Loomis heads. There's my wife. This was... This not Obviously, it's not a sketch. I did this on bristle paper, but it's it's here. Yeah. It's more Those are page. actually done in a sketchbook. These are in a sketchbook. You can tell because there's the binder. <laughs> That's my son, um, my grandparents. Yeah, so th these are essentially, this is essentially your sketchbook. My great sketch grandpa. Book. Wow, crazy. He was alive when I was born. That's, but, that's you. wait, that's my brother, and that's me. These are studies for a painting. I guess I'm doing a sketchbook tour. I, I guess so, slightly. <laughs> well, I guess whenever, if we ever release this, we'll have a, a tour of the book. Yeah, we'll have. We'll probably do another one, but yeah, yeah, we. This isn't for sale. This is this is like a prototype we made. But, yeah. Um, more. St this is another study for a, a painting. Actually, this is also a study for a painting. Um, these are. This is a long drawing. This was 15 hours, and I did, I only got halfway through it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I could have done 30 hours probably. No, probably not. Most of the, I put a lot of time into the face, so maybe another five hours I could finish those like more long 15 hour studies. More stuff. Hey, look, Draftsman logos. <laughs> these are these are all three hour figure drawings from the Watts life drawing session. Oh, these are actually just demos for my courses. Three hour stuff. Am I gonna go through the whole book? You could just scroll through real quick and then scroll through. I, I think there should be a video where you actually just Yeah. You know, just talk about each drawing and little lands. Well, quick sketches. And this is probably like 10% of all your drawings. Oh, right? no, it's less than 10%. Yeah, these are just the highlights. This is, yeah, this is way less than 10% of like all my drawings. It's like 1% of all your drawings? <laughs> I, I don't know what the percentage is, but yeah, it's it's not. Yeah. It's just the ones that I'm proud of. I, I went through all my newsprint stuff, and I just picked like the ones I really like. Um, feature stuff. Anyway. Da da da, anatomy. Da da, done. There you go. Cool. Back to color. Um, there are several erotic artists with very impressive art. Any chance that we will see them on Proko? Um, you've already seen Kim Jong Gi on Proko. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they have to offer something other than just the fact that they're erotic. I don't know. It, I'm not gonna bring them on just because they have that, you know, because there's a market for it, you know. We're an educational site, you know. We're not gonna, 
try to bring ar um, artists like that just because they're going to be popular. Um, they also have to be teaching, right? Like, So it really depends. I'm not going to say no to uh, someone who does more sexual stuff just because they do sexual stuff. I mean, I didn't say no to Kim Jong-e, right? Um, but I'm not going to also say yes just because they do that. They have to have a diff there has to be a different reason for me to work with them. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Stan, I know not, you're not an advisor, but as an artist, <laughs> what? what I, I, like, a, like a career advisor. Like a, oh, career advisor. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, but as an artist, what other degrees do you think could complement your artistic su success? Um, if that degrees? I don't know. I don't know much about degrees. But like as far as skills, um, I think marketing business. skills for sure. You know, every part of business. Programming. Uh, maybe. Like psycho human psychology, relationships. Um, programming, yeah. I mean, it's definitely helped me a lot. I, I do... A, you know because i i run a business but not as an artist maybe not if you're purely just going to be an artist you don't really need to know how to program but um i'll probably just inject more color variety in here later i kind of i just want to like fill in fill this this area this mass with a somewhat of an average i'm still going for variety like this is a little more orange in here more pink in here kind of peachy here but still way less orange than like than that. Um. Um, what are the best paint tube suppliers? There's so many good ones, man. There, there's a lot. Richardson. Um, okay, so the ones I use, Gamblin, Richardson, uh, Windsor Newton. Uh, what else do I use? Nah. Uh, you said Gamblin, yeah, uh, so Gamblin, Richardson. Richardson, and Windsor Newton. This is probably the biggest, the, the ones I use the most. Um, whenever I want like a really cheap paint, I, I've bought Utrecht. Um, they're like, oh, they're pretty cheap. <laughs> but you were the question was for best, right? Um, but yeah, I, I think Gamblin's fine. Like, like all yeah, they're, they're all, they're, they're none all of them are expensive. Yeah. like super expensive they're, they're, none of those are like considered the the expensive paint um, I actually don't see too much of a difference going from like a you know an affordable paint like Windsor Newton or, or Richardson or Gamblin to something more like like Holbein right is Holbein the one that people are like woo there's so much pigment in there and like I've n I, I think so I think yeah the and th there's a uh, what's the gosh shoot Jack 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 Richardson? No, no. The other there, is there another Jack? Can you go look at that? There's a. I have a thing. I didn't even open it. I bought. I bought a set of paint that was so expensive. I still haven't opened it because it's so expensive. <laughs> so like, it's kind of pointless, right? Um, but you're scared to use it because you're you don't want to waste the paint. It's that it's um second shelf down on the very left. Oh. That thing, yeah. What's the Michael Harding, yeah. So he's he makes amazing paint. People swear by it, but they're way more expensive um, because he like they they're a smaller company. They make all their stuff by hand, and like they they just have really high standards for quality. Yeah. But I don't know if I personally would would care to uh, for that much of a difference to me. You know. Anyway, it's highly based on preference. I, I yeah, mean, of course. Um, like, I mean, people, some people paint with student grade paints professionally yeah. and others will never. Calvin Liang used Winton, only Winton paint. That's crazy. It's, and, and did you see how colorful his paint? It's incredible. Like, it, yeah. So it, like, yeah, it's just, it's like a, such a yeah. great example that you, you can use Winton and you can paint like Calvin Liang. And Frank Frazetta used the basic Disney $12 water, watercolor set you, you get from, you know, a gift shop, mm, you know, to, nice. to a lot of his paintings. So I'm looking for areas of kind of a greenish gray. I'm seeing some in like some of these areas of of half tone. Uh, the ear is also has some little grays in here, but it's more of a purpley gray. So let's do purple, a little bit of black, a little bit of white. It down. It's a really quick and dirty way of graying it down, but it works. 
I'm not going for like a high chroma painting in this one. So. See, so there's a different, there's a purpley gray, here's a greenish gray. Wait, difference. Um, what do you think of the graffiti slash street artist Banksy? Um, it's cool. I like his stuff. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't like do master studies of his stuff, but it's certainly not created for that purpose, <laughs> right? It's more for their social impact or whatever. The, the wow factor. But yeah, I like it. It's cool. It's fun to fun to hear about uh, what do you prefer direct or indirect classical pr classical approach in the case of oil painting and what do you recommend to beginners direct or indirect yeah so like wet in the wet versus like layering like um, like Caesar Santos would do yeah is that kind of the question okay um, I mean I I've never done the Caesar Santos like classical thin layers approach I've always been a direct wet in the wet painter so I, I don't really even know how to compare. I've, n I've not a single time tried <laughs> to paint like the, like the approach Cesar Santos uses. Hmm. Have it's, you? No, it's hard. Yeah. It is. It's, it's super really, hard. You, it's, you need to train for years to yeah. have confidence to do it. Yeah. It's, it's not it, something you can try and be like, oh, cool, yeah, that works. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's, it's, you got to just like, you got to focus on studying that for a long time. Um, so much of that is very technical. You have to understand your tools how to do it it's not just about understanding principles of like light and color and perspective it's like you got to learn your tools very well um, okay let's get that shadow in there um here ba, 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 ba. there just this, for the sake of filling that in and finishing the white the light areas dun, dun, dun. i'll come back through here later and oh, sorry, I was covering. Um, if you're not going to teach the digital painting course, who will? Ooh. <laughs> Should we announce it? Oh, man. He's probably watching. Um, there's actually two or three. Wait, how many people? I think working out. Okay, so John Nymeister is probably going to be the first one. Um, he's teaching like the beginner, like the fundamentals of digital painting. Um, fun fact, he was my first employee. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then he went off and did his own thing and now he's coming back and doing some courses. So that's fun. Um, Scott Flanders is planning on it. Hasn't started production on that yet. And then, is there another one? Well, he's doing a basics of concept design. A, yeah, a but he wanted to. Design. He wanted to do more. He wanted to also just cover more like digital painting yeah. concepts, not concept design, but digital painting in general. Um, but anyway, yeah, the actual like digital painting fundamentals course is John Nymeister. I, sorry, John. I don't know if I was supposed to announce that. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a very good artist. <laughs> he and, is a very good artist. Yeah, you should check him out. Yeah. John Nymeister. And I'll, by the way, my values in here are not all correct. This I am is kind of like my first pass. Like for sure, in here, I need some darker values for that plane. Um, I need lighter tones in here for the highlight. Right. I'm kind of trying to keep it as a as a, as close to to a single value as I can. Um. Okay, for the darks. I'm going to actually start with the the edge between these because it actually gets dark in some areas. There's like a core shadow right there. Um, darks in here. And then I'll go into the orange. Um, how big is your team and what are the different jobs? Um, so employees, we got 11 right now. Um, most are editors. We got um, people like Christian who just live here. <laughs> His job is to live here. Yeah, it's true. Um, no, I'm just kidding. He's great. Mm. His job is to 
be in videos and stuff. No, no, he he's the he's bit like business development region. He t- talks to a lot of potential teachers and stuff. If you're a teacher, send me an email. Yeah, Christian at Proco dot com with a K. Christian yeah, Christian K R I S T I A N <laughs> at Proco dot com. And also, if you're a girl and you want to date Christian, <laughs> no, no, please. Why not? So uh, too, you've too seen shy. him half naked already. Yeah. Um, if you haven't, go watch that video. <laughs> it's oh, the Proco announcement video, like the the vertical one. Is oh, really? oh no, the yeah, the Proco announcement. I'm video. blushing. Are you? Yeah. Can't tell. Yeah. My skin is too pale. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like you look normal now. Yeah. If you're really into pale, you know, gaunt young men, then yeah. then, then email you, Christian. Yeah, 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 exactly. oh, right, cool. It's super pale. You know, not in great shape. <laughs> Next time, can you share the the results of that? Uh, uh, like if you got any good like inquiry <laughs> no <laughs> yeah okay. uh, what is your favorite book for learning drawing or painting um, favorite book for drawing and painting um, I like obviously the Loomis books I like a lot of anatomy books um, oh gosh we took down the program slash books we don't have that page anymore because of oh, the bummer. update, but we'll put it back up. Um, I have a. I made a post on the forum. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay, yeah. in go into the go to program.com, click on community, and in community there is a community search that's separate from the global community at the top, so where you just search for like comments and topics and stuff. Search for like art, bo- our art lounge, and then top oh ten. oh go into art lounge and there's a books thing in there. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, top ten art books. Top ten art books. You can just search for that in, in the community, like you type search it yeah um do you want to talk about how to use albums at some point by the way how to use albums yeah like how i'm i have a giant catalog of artists in my album well i I don't necessarily think that's the way that people should be using it Hmm. (laughs) do you think people should just be uh, uploading stuff they like into their albums i mean i feel like most should be uploading their student work so that they can learn well but if you want to help somebody else it might help to have uh, a bunch of references or examples of what you think other students should do in your in your album to easily reference yeah i guess it, it, it's up to you what you want to make your your profile albums have in them um everyone's going to have a different you know purpose for using progo some are here to teach some are here to learn um so um yeah whatever it's up to you but you can upload albums in the uh, classroom area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plug to your albums. And by the way, when you make a post, you can choose which album your images get uploaded to. Um, so you can make more albums and then upload, you know, keep keep all your stuff organized if you want. Um, Proko, do you know any horror artists to look out for? Horror? Yeah. I'm going to say Eric Gist. Oh yeah, for sure. Eric Ericus is a great horror painter. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't follow horror too much, but yeah, Eric is uh, the first one that comes to mind. Ooh, I'm gonna make this much colder and bluer now that I have my ultramarine. Look at that. I make such a nicer blue than than your cerulean, Christian. Wow. <laughs> oh, whoop. I'm covering up the. At what point will you add a background? Ah, you guys! Shut up! No, that was me. That was me talking. Oh, that was you? <laughs> yeah. Christian! I didn't want to say anything. Shut up! Yeah. I will at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know when. I'm trying to get my shadow, my lights, my shadows, and then I'll probably add some in there. I'm not actually sure what, what my background is going to be yet, actually. Hmm. I might make make it kind of glow in here, and so I'm going to have to add some orangey tones and then more cold on this side. Probably that's what's going to happen. Um,
So see how like that eye, <laughs> I did not draw an eye. I drew a triangle, but I have like a value in there. That's when I squint and I probably have a, my shape is too tall. Like when I squint, this is a skinnier triangle. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off a little bit at the top there, but that's the, that's how you do a color study. You're not drawing an eye. You're just putting giant patches of tone and color. Now that you're working mainly on Proco.com, do you still paint for fun or as a hobby? <laughs> now? <I've laughs> it's, that's been the case for a long time where I, I have not, no, I, I don't paint for a hobby. Um, I want to. It's probably like the main thing I still want to do that I don't get to do. It's like, but I have responsibilities that I can't not do. So that's the answer to that question. I've watched the podcast episode on developing an illustration and was wondering what would be a, a reasonable time frame for finishing an illustration starting from a preliminary work. A reasonable time? It, it depends on your style. For for Magic, they they, yeah. they give you two weeks, I think, two for weeks. Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Um, cool. For other places, they might give you a month, two months. really depends on who's hiring you. Yeah. Um, but a uh, professional fantasy illustrator might tell you two weeks um, otherwise you might not be able to make a living if you're any longer than that yeah but in advertising advertising pays more so. um, and I guess this is another part of their question um uh, what is a good exercise to learn to better see colors as values and to get values correct? Uh, this, yeah. what I'm doing right now. Um, for values, I'd probably go, go to drawing, you know, um, for color. It's exactly what I'm doing. Um, you're, you're, just, you're looking at a reference or a model that's in front of you and you're studying a very specific thing. I'm not too worried about my proportions. I'm not trying to make it look like David. I'm focused on one very specific thing. This is an exercise. Um, anything you want to get better at, do that. Do that thing. <laughs> it's typically most of the answer to that question is to do that. How do you study color? You study color. You, do the, you paint with a focus on color. How do you study proportions? You paint and you focus on proportions and you try to get them as accurate as you can. How do you study anatomy? You draw, you look at a person, and you try to get the anatomy correct. And you try to take the skin off and draw as much of the anatomy as you can. It's like practice and doing is 70, 80% of getting better. The, remaining, the remainder of that is knowledge. I feel like I'm not making some of these things dark enough. Mm. Let me see, I'm gonna put some of these orange notes in there. And see how I wanted to, to make this a little darker than I see it up there um, but let's see <laughs> what uh, look what a cynics just texted what Wait, do I read this out loud? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. What? Wait, I, so, I, so Cynics endorses... Oh my god, I, I hope uh, he knows we're reading this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Wait, I don't fully understand this. Uh, <laughs> if, you need a if you need a character reference, just let people know I fully endorse, endorse every girl to submit their application to date you. Yeah. Referring to Christian. Yes, so Cynics, cynics endorses that. I don't even get what that yeah. means. I, I I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Nick. So yeah. You endorse something? You want to switch the... Oh. 
Cynics endorses something about girls. Yeah. Um, can acrylic be harder to work with uh, than oil due to the fast drying time? Uh, personally, I, I think I think yes. I, I I don't like the fast drying time, but I think some people maybe think it's easier because of that. Uh, I'm not sure, but I I'm so used to just being able to like go to another area to, to an area I worked on like an hour, two hours, three hours ago, and it's still wet. Um, that's just part of my process, and so. If I yeah like that makes acrylic much harder for me. Like I taught at a high school for for like a year or two, and they didn't use oils because of uh, health reasons, and so they they used acrylics. And I hated teaching people in the acrylics because I just wasn't used to it. So for me, yeah, it's harder. But for you, maybe not. Um, how important is it to keep changing brushes? I struggle with muddy colors. Where... I've been using this brush almost the whole time. The only time I changed my brush was to get this blue, this really, really bright blue. And that's just because I didn't want to wash this brush because I had like all of this like white and red and stuff on it already. And I just wanted a quick indication of the shirt. I knew I wasn't going to spend a long time on it. I just kind of boop, 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 and then switched back to this for skin tones. But I've been using a single brush wiping it and if it's a big shift in color like not not this big but if it's like from from this to this i i wash it in my my turp bucket here wipe it and then i got a pretty clean brush there's still some in there of course but because i'm not washing it with soap but it's clean enough for me to get a nice clean mixture uh for my different color so what was he? What did he say? He struggles with or she? Um, I uh, struggle with muddy colors where it's just a constant issue of just trying to get bright, saturated colors and adding too much white, or otherwise where it gets gr uh, gross and gray. Well, why are you always trying to get bright colors? Not not every color is bright. Like nothing in here is actually really bright. These are all super super muted. The 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 problem isn't muted colors. There's nothing wrong with muted colors. Um, it's when it's the wrong hue, it's it's the wrong temperature, the, like that's it's the wrong value. That's when things look wrong. But if you tone things down, that like like tone not tone things down. If you make everything a little less saturated, that's not a problem. Um, like taking a, a really nice painting that, uh, by somebody like Sargent or Soroya or whoever, take it into Photoshop. And then just bring the saturation level down. Just keep going. Bring it to like 25% saturation. It still looks amazing with very muted colors um, because you're not actually breaking the relationships between those colors and you're not breaking the values. Um, what you're laughing, Christian, is, is Cynic's replying? No, no, I'm just replying oh, okay. to him. So... Um, I think there's a misunderstanding in your um, in your mind of what actually is happening that's breaking your colors there, um, making them look muddy. It's it's not it's not that they're less saturated. Um, the the other part of their question was I'm wondering if I'm over blending or if it's because I'm using the same three brushes. It's neither one of those. I mean, it could be that you're over blending. Certainly, if you blend, it'll 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 ruin your edges. I think more so than make your colors wrong. But um, I don't think it's the brushes. You could just wipe. You could just go for one second in Gamsol and wipe, and it's clean enough to get a nice clean color mixture. I remember I was watching your interview with Steve Houston and you were talking about how you were quoting somebody where you can do a beautiful painting with a broom and mud. Oh, I never did that. Oh, God. <laughs> I was supposed to do oh, that. Oh, yeah, you were supposed to do that. Should, yeah. oh, maybe I could do that like a live stream. Yeah, you totally <laughs> should. Why did I just say that? Yeah, <laughs> it's too late. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, make Stan do it. <laughs> Okay, what was the challenge? I was supposed to use a broom and mud. mud? No, was it mud? I don't. I think know. maybe Steve Houston said that, and then I I might have said I want to 
just do a painting with a broomstick. Yeah. Right. Ah, oh, God, that's the worst. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a big painting. I'm you totally gonna, I'm not going to do, like, right. a little, um, use a broom for this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I could, I could do one. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, caramba. Um. This is kind of a long question. Uh, Good. It took me time to not listen to it and paint. Okay, well, I'll just read kidding. the entire thing. But. I'm just kidding. I'm going to listen. Um, I've started college this year, and I'm interested in art, philosophy, psychology, and biology. I feel like I'm interested in too many things, but don't have enough time to study it and study it well. Not to mention all the subfields in each field that require a lot of time. Like in art, there's sculpting, painting, and me meaning making meaningful art. How do I study everything I'm interested in? Do I not just study some things? You're going to have to have periods where you focus on things. You, you obviously don't have enough time every day to study everything. Um, and switching too, too often too quickly um, is not good because your brain needs time to absorb information and practice that information that you're absorbing. Um, but yeah, you, you, can, you can study a lot of different things. Just, you know, make sure that you have primary one, two, or three focuses every few, you know, every few months or maybe even like in a six month period you have two or three focuses that you, you, you just do these you just are improving in these things um, and then once you feel like you're not interested in it anymore you've exhausted for now that oh shoot what am I doing um, then you can kind of switch focus and then come back to it again later um, yeah, that, that's that's probably my answer. Is that you, you could totally do that. You just have to choose your battles. Well, also, if you're in college, you're really young. You know, you have plenty of time to just focus on different things. Like, um, you know, if you want to learn how to paint, you could spend a couple years painting. And if you want to learn about psychology or philosophy, you know, you always have time to study that stuff later on. Um, Cynics replied. Was he, is he, he pissed said, off at us? No, he said, uh, I guess my wording, wording didn't make sense, but he says, I'll offer a free mentorship to any girl that goes on a date with Oh, my Christian. God. <laughs> this is getting serious. Wow. Wow, thank you. He goes on a date with Chris. A wow. free mentorship. How long of a mentorship? As uh, long as he, he's dating you? <laughs> for... <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, yeah that's what he's committed so to. he dates you for three years, he should, yeah, yeah. he'll... Yeah. <laughs> no, it's getting weird. It's getting a little weird. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, I think the character reference was he will vouch for me if, uh, you know. What do you mean? Like, I still don't get that. Like when somebody is a character reference for somebody else, they're like that person's a good person, you know. Oh. Yeah. Like, that's like what that means. Yeah, I thought yeah. character reference like photo reference for character. I, I, I thought like, that's what it was too. But, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. But uh, thank you, thank you, cynics. It's, uh, yeah. Thanks for making this interesting, man. Um, books that you'd recommend that could complement your three main courses. Ooh. So for anatomy, I would certainly go with like um, Roche and Goldfinger for referencing those for like accuracy. Um, Bombus a lot, quite a bit actually. Bridgman for once you start getting you know understanding the anatomy Loomis. pretty well. Well, not for Luma's not really for anatomy, no. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was I was oh, going on the anatomy okay, list. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, for for figure, um, Loomis, Vilpu, um, who else? Loomis, Vilpu. Um, oh, Steve Houston has a book now. He released I think a few years ago. Michael Hampton. Michael, yeah, Michael Hampton for sure. Um, force method for gesture. Mike Matizzi. Yeah, Mike Matizzi has force stuff. Um, again, Loomis for my portrait course, obviously. That's pretty much all it is, is, is Loomis stuff. And then and it features, anatomy of the features is the second half of the portrait course. Mm. Um, Vanderpool. Vanderpool is very good. Yeah, Vanderpool for sure. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I reference Vanderpool a lot, but not nearly as much as some of the other ones I reference. I, I, I he's mentioned. good for features. He's yeah. really good for features. Uh, Hogarth, Bern Hogarth is is really good. Um, Ryan Benjamin actually. He has said, a book. No, Ryan Benjamin said that Bern Hogarth was his biggest 
anatomy oh, was. Nice. I was really. He said Bridgman, you know, was a, a, a somewhat of an influence, but Byrne was a bigger influence to him. Cool. Will you ever bring guests on Draftsman to talk about mental health, different disorders, and how they affect doing art? talk to Marshall. Marshall's the guy that chooses mostly. <laughs> like when it's like, ooh, no, let's not do that. Marshall's the guy. Because I'm, I'm always like, yeah, let's do that. Cool. And Marshall's like, ooh, let's not. <laughs> um, TJ Geisen says, uh, you mean I get a mentorship with yeah. Cynics and a date with Christian? And a date board. with Christian. It's a TJ. TJ yes, yeah, I know yeah, who okay. TJ is. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It, it really is a steal. It yeah. is. Yeah. I don't understand why anybody would not yeah. take that deal. Yeah. You're gonna get flooded, man. <laughs> you're, you're you're gonna be dating like yeah. twenty girls at the same time, Damn and then man. Cynics is gonna be overwhelmed with mentorship. <laughs> oh yeah. He didn't yeah. put a limit to it. No, he didn't. Yeah. A... He said any girl. Yeah. And I also think he said all girls. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, I guess TJ. Sorry, I think Cynics actually specifically said girl. <laughs> yeah. So, right. yeah, you're kind of exempt. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, TJ. I don't know why Cynics has to create these stupid rules. <laughs> um, we answered this earlier, or Stan answered this earlier in the stream. But a practical question: uh, Do you think painting or drawing on an easel is better than on a desk? Um. I like it more, yeah, because I could extend my arm and and I can use my shoulder and my elbow to paint and keep my wrist locked. But I'm when I'm looking down, I have to like kind of do this, and I'm using my wrist more. I'm I'm not using my shoulder almost at all. It's really awkward for me to use my shoulder when the canvas is like pointed away from me. It's super weird. Um, I don't know why because I could I do it with my pencil if the pencil. My sketchbook is flat on a table. I could totally use my shoulder and my arm, but with a brush, it's weird. It's more awkward. I don't know why. You, you can also Maybe step away from the painting easier. So oh yeah, that's true. If you're not sitting down, you I constantly step away from my painting, constantly, and so, yeah. Um, I feel like I need to start introducing some background and stuff because these two these two worlds right now are not going well together. <laughs> It's like two very, very different sides of the face. Um, and yeah, they're not coming together well. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna put, this is the point, Christian. You asked me, when am I gonna add a background? Right now. Yep. There's a little blue, make that cold. And then um, a little bit of orange, red. Cynic says no limit, and he also says, tell Stan I love watching him paint and should do these streams regularly. Really? Man, I always felt like I'm a really slow painter live stream. I'm actually really slow at anything live stream. I thought it was boring to watch me, but. I like watching you. you. Yeah, this is like watching you paint is really cool, actually. Thank you. I'm gonna make your. I'm gonna get paint on your iPad. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna try really hard not to, but it's getting so close. Yeah, it could be wiped off. I it's guess. true. Yeah, it'll make a good memento, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I. It's really hard not to touch it. <laughs> I can move it slightly to the right. No, I guess people won't be able to see it. Ah. Because I need that space to add a glow. I can't. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Move it a little bit. There you go. Thank you. Oh. I'll, I'll move it back when. Yeah. They, they can still see it. I'm just doing background right now. I'm not actually looking at the photo. Um, I'm currently learning the digital paint on a zero to ten point value scale. As I get more comfortable with that, should it change? Is the goal to need fewer and fewer values, to, or get more comfortable until I'm adjusting on a zero to one hundred? Wait, get fewer and fewer values, or, or I guess fewer and fewer distinctions. So go from oh, oh, know, I zero see. to fifty, or zero, from one to ten to one to fifty. To well, 
I think that in it's it depends on what like stage of the drawing you're in. When when I start a drawing, I'm still thinking of just two values most of the time, and then once I start rendering and shading, then I'm thinking of five values, and then as I get r even closer to the finish of that, then I'm thinking of like eight and ten, and actually. At a point, I'd, there's actually no limit. I'm not actually like thinking eight values in my head. I'm just thinking there is no limit. I'm just trying to get more accurate with the values and the transitions. But they're, the very early stages in the drawing and in the painting, I am limiting my values. No matter how advanced you get, you have to design your values. And in designing, our brain can only juggle so many values right you, you can't control 20 values in your head with your design the way you're designing them so you have to limit um but then yeah as you get more advanced you'll just be able to see those subtleties more and transition between them I guess, so well the two values the most important part right? yeah yeah That's for sure like, yeah. yeah if you get that the two value and then get adding those details in later is is not too difficult as long as you try to keep those values yeah. in there Th that um, don't lose that two value contrast yeah. yeah kind of want like a really cold note here for some reason I don't know why Stan, are you introducing a clothes anatomy? And if yes, who will teach it? Um, clothes anatomy course. So I guess there too, somebody yeah. will teach fabric. And I was I was actually work, we've been working on one, and then um, the instructor just kind of stopped. So we might have to find a new one. Um, but yeah, I, I, we started working on it years ago. So it, it's an important thing I want to make sure we include in our in our curriculum. One thing I didn't mention actually is that like you can have very muted colors in, in a lot of areas and then you have little notes of saturation and those little notes of saturation make the whole thing feel more colorful. It's really weird. You don't have to make every color you put down really bright. Um, sometimes it's just like a little edge like you see how that little edge right there is like a brighter rose um, that could make it glow and you don't even really pay attention to that little edge sometimes your lighter and your mid half tones there are really muted and then you can inject some bright notes into the darker half tones and it'll make the whole area of light feel bright or saturated um, so keep that in mind that you don't have to make everything colorful for the painting to feel colorful Screw it up. Yeah, don't make a touch. It's still wet. Yeah. Um, any advice on someone who's getting into teaching art but has imposter syndrome? <laughs> Christian, this, this is for you. Okay. Go ahead and answer. Oh, um, just start. Seriously. You know, it's like the goal isn't to teach the people that you look up to. The goal is to teach the 16-year-old version of yourself something. Wow. Good. Yeah, I'm glad you answered that, Nelly. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, again, it's you can, you know, teach something to somebody that, you know, some like imagine if you could go back and talk to the person that's, you know, you 10 years ago. You know, you might pay a million dollars to give yourself advice, you know. Um, so as a result, they'll, they will value your opinion. Um, and if you just keep starting, and I, I, I've been getting into teaching a little bit and been trying to critique on the forums and that's been helpful for me just to you know practice articulating thoughts and um, doing drawers and all that kind of stuff nice you've been doing a good job oh, thanks Uh, TJ says he'll make an exception. Love is love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing. Oh, TJ. Oh, TJ. 
Um, I'm comfortable drawing, but I have a hard time switching to painting. Do you have any tips for making that transition? Ooh. Uh, Just start, right? Yeah, it's, it's the medium you're probably uncomfortable with. I mean, that is a very big transition. Going from like a dry medium where your value, you control your value by the pressure you use on the pencil to going to a medium where you have to mix different values, right? Each value you actually have to think about rather than just like release your hand a little bit. Um, that's a big difference in your thought process. And so, yeah, you just got to start doing that and getting into that mindset. Oh my god, we're, we're almost at three hours already? It's been going quick. What? Okay, well, I guess I'm only doing two today. <laughs> um. Will we ever see Skelly again? Yeah. We will. For sure. Okay, give me a sec, I'm going to read a long question. I'm sort of new to art. I've been drawing for 10 months, but I have a decent grasp on anatomy. I want to learn more about it and branch out into other fundamentals. I'm about to be a senior in high school and I'm scrambling to figure out what I want to go to college for. I feel a bit lost because I want to take in-person classes since I feel much more comfortable learning with someone to guide me, but a lot of the colleges look to be only online courses like the Watts Atelier. I'm planning to visit a bunch of art schools within California. Well, Watts is not only online. Uh, well, I guess right right second. now. Well, yeah. they're starting up again in a few weeks, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm planning to visit a bunch of art schools in California, but during the summer, should I try to on, try online courses like the Watts Atelier from another place to see if I like it? Or from other places to see if yeah, I like it? Yeah, try online courses for sure. Try online courses. Try in, in-person courses. Um, uh, yeah, both. <laughs> That's a very good yeah. the, the information they'll, they'll give you is exactly the same. Um, yeah, it's more of the in-person stuff that is actually very valuable. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you can create that yourself. And, uh, kind of, yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's kind of trying to do, but... Exactly, yeah. yeah. The goal of Proco 2.0. It's the goal, but it's you know still obviously harder than if you're just going to like a, a school that where the teacher's right there looking over your shoulder. So yeah, the, the answer is uh, do both if you can afford them. Um, but if you if you can't afford both, do as much of the in-person stuff as you can, and then switch to online when you're you can't do that anymore. Yeah, and there are plenty of people that got really good, not even you know just being completely online. And, uh, yeah. What do you think should go into a curriculum for artists who are being self-taught? Um, figure drawing? Well, yeah, the base, start with the basics. Figure drawing, my figure drawing course is the most basic one that I make. Um, I'm working on an even more basic one, but it's not ready. Uh, but yeah, gesture, structure, um, composition, color, and then like anatomy. Oh, what else am I missing? We, we do have a draftsman episode where we talk about what are the fundamentals. So that, you know, look that up and you'll, you'll find what you need to focus on. Um, would you ever consider doing a class with Trent Canuga? <laughs> yeah, I think we're yeah, working on yeah, one. Yeah, we're working on one. Yep. Yeah. Which course do you want to see from Trent Canuga? Yeah. What do you want him to teach? Um. Uh, orange plus blue. Wow. What should I do in there? Oops. 
Uh, there's a lot of knowledge online, but I have a hard time finding assignments to apply it. Do you have any tips for making your own assignments slash exercise to apply that knowledge? Um, sorry. Uh, hold on. No. Oh, yes. Hold on. I'm like trying to get this right color in there. Um, I would say just follow your interests. Um, you know, it's a uh, if you're into doing perspective drawing, then go out and draw buildings. Or if you're into figure drawing, draw people. And um, I, I know a. Uh, like I, I've talked to guys like Philip Tan or Ryan Benjamin or, or Jim Lee or any of those guys, and they all tell me it's like, go to a coffee shop and sketch people for, you know, four or five hours and just see what happens. And, um, just by the result of drawing, you're gonna start having a shorthand for how to draw people. Okay, <laughs> totally missed that one, but no, did you want to? No, answer? it's fine. Okay, I think you you answered it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know if they want to me, finish but... this off. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. But yeah. you're doing a good job answering questions. Oh, thanks. I think right now one issue is that these two sides, the values are so similar. I need to inject these highlights onto the left side. Um, so, we gotta do that. Are we running out of questions? Uh, no, I just, uh, no? Oh, okay. good, good the impression you want yeah, to Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm like, if you ask me a question, I'm like, stop talking. Yeah. And then you don't. Yeah. All right. Is everyone not, is everyone gone? No, no we got cool. a bunch of viewers. All right, highlights. They have to have a lot of white, but I gotta choose. So, th so this is a very cold, so I'm gonna actually go with a blue. Here I went with a green, greenish kind of olivey highlight. In this one I'm gonna go more, much more blue. So basically, start with white, a touch of alizarin, or sorry, um, ultramarine. I had orange in my brush. Probably fine actually. Don't want pure blue. Um, I have a big problem with binging tutorials and not doing the work. Where's Ooh, the... that's a really, really big problem. Uh, it really you, is. Do you that's, have any advice? Um, stop. <laughs> really stop. Set a schedule for yourself. So say, okay, if you're going through like the figure drawing course, you you look at the the lessons and you say, okay, this week. I'm only going to watch the gesture lesson, um, and then I'm going to practice it for a few days, and then on Thursday, I'm going to watch the example videos of Stan doing those gestures, and then next Monday, I'll, I'll start my day by doing some more gestures, and then I'll watch the, uh, the, the bean episode, the next lesson, and then I'll do several days of just practicing and so you you kind of create a curriculum for yourself of you know one to two weeks on a major lesson and then practice that lesson and then you say I won't watch the bean video till two weeks from now I won't watch the, the robo bean and the structures from or a month from now and you keep doing that you, you you really have to practice the information if you really want to absorb it you can't just you, you can't just watch videos it doesn't do anything um, without yeah. the practice, you'll forget it. You'll forget it within a few weeks if um, you don't in, in, ingrain it in your head. In your head. Well, and well, while while you were at Watts, you're only taking a few co few classes. At yeah, a time. exactly. Yeah, exactly. We would take like a gesture class, and this whole class it would be ten weeks long that was focused on studying gesture, right? And so, and you it was take that very class focused. Ten times, right? I would take that class many times, but yeah, it, the thing is that in the gesture class, each student kind of focused on something slightly different. Yeah. Like as you get more advanced, you you it's not you're not just doing gesture. It becomes more of like a quick sketch class where you can practice like anatomy. Well, but you were never taking twelve classes. Right? No, 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 no. I, at most I took four classes per week. Yeah. That was my maximum. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I guess um, figure out what you want to do. Yeah, no, my main thing is decide beforehand what your schedule is. If you wake up that day and you're not really sure what you're going to study, 
you're just gonna go watch a video. That's the easiest thing for you to do. But if you know that you're supposed to that day practice the stuff you learned from the gesture lesson that you watched yesterday, you're gonna do that because it's already in your schedule. Or you, I mean, you're more likely to do it. You're, you know, you can obviously break your schedule. Um, but without a schedule, it's actually really difficult to kind of stick to that. You're just gonna wake up, you're gonna be a little tired, and you're gonna just like whip out your phone, start watching YouTube. Um, and yeah, that's not, that's not good. You, you need to create your own curriculum just like you would have in a college where you're signing up for classes. I think that's the importance of being around people is to keep you accountable. Yeah. Like, like what you were talking about with your swimming thing. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like getting ding $15 does make you not want to do it. Right? Well, it makes me not want to miss it. Yeah. 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 Um, sure. And it's actually good. Um, which, uh, what do you recommend for courses for a young person creating a portfolio for a high school, or I guess for a high school, or for a college, uh, probably in high school for a college, or I, I guess so. I don't see why you'd need a portfolio for a high school. Uh, young person creating a portfolio for an arts. Oh wait, yeah, an art high school. An arts wow. high school, yeah. You need it. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Um, for an art high school, I pro. Okay, I don't know what high schools, what criteria they have for accepting students, but I suppose that it would be to show that you have some interest and that you're a hardworking person. Um, that's my gut feeling on that, but I don't know. I've actually, I've never seen a, heard of a high school that has applications for portfolios. Have you, Christian? I, it makes sense. I mean... Yeah, but have you heard of that actually being... Some, a thing um, maybe like a like if grand central atelier was doing like a uh you know kids or youth workshop for a summer or something just to get the impression that people were serious i think what high schools are mainly looking for is if you're serious about drawing yeah like exactly you, you they, they, they're not expecting you to be good i think that's what i just said yeah 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 well i wasn't listening so <laughs> you were listening <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I literally just said okay. you gotta show that you're serious yeah <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i was uh, looking at questions yeah, yeah. cool um, man i feel like i could have gone even more uh less saturated in this area but also this tv just is not correct look at how look at my tone my colors are. yeah looks so different from yeah, what okay. i'm saying let me see the uh the feed it, it looks like a different painting I mean, can you full screen it? Yeah. Oh man, it looks so much more saturated, you guys. I'm sorry that um, my whole painting is actually less saturated than this. Um, well, I'll, I'll post the final. I'll take a good photo. I'll make sure it's like exactly how it's supposed to be, and we'll we'll post it so you can see the final colors. Um, but. Um, there is a, a really big difference between the chroma here and here. Uh, do you think learning to draw can make me a better 3D artist? Yes. Y yes. Yeah, yeah. I I'm a big believer in uh, cross training. That, like, you can learn something in, like, programming, right? In math. And then you can take that and you could it could apply to dancing. <laughs> like I'm not joking. Like you, you you could actually have information that could carry over to really really different disciplines. Um. So yes. Uh, I was watching Andrew Keith's announcement video for his uh, sculpture course, and he was saying that a, I can't remember the artist, but they recommend that a sculptor draws more than a painter. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because hmm. <laughs> um, I think it's like you have a lot more opportunity in a, like, like people are going to scrutinize a sculpture a lot more than the accuracy of a painting. Something that's like more accurate, like 3D. Okay. Interesting. Um, 
Stan or Christian, what do you think of Aaron Blaze? Can you guys? I love that? Aaron Blaze. Yeah, Aaron Blaze is the best. Yeah, we have a course on yeah. Progo.com with Aaron Blaze. Uh, can you guys work with him for a digital painting course? A digital painting course, uh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. If he, totally if he open, wants to, yeah, <laughs> it's, totally it's up to him. Yeah. Um, he's an yeah, he's so good at digital painting too. He's good at everything. Yeah, great artist. Um, what is it missing? Hold on, let me. Let me see. Um, it definitely didn't put the lips in again, and I probably could actually put in some. A lip indication like right there. Uh, let's see. Higher up. <laughs> oh no! Hold on, hold on. Ah. Why do I start detailing stuff when I'm doing a color study? I think a better indication for the lips in that area would actually be to, to put some light underneath, like right here. Like that's a better indication of that plane change than just putting like a dark accent there ready for a question uh, sure uh, what are your thoughts on water soluble oil paints and are the colors as vibrant as regular watercolor paints uh, I really dislike the way they mix I, 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 I had to use them again in that high school that I, I taught at it was it, some some people used acrylics and some people used water soluble oils, and I disliked both. I just could not get it to work. They just they don't mix the same. They're the the um, the pigments just it's like you, you think it's gonna do one thing, but it's like completely different. It like goes away immediately. The color doesn't last. You add white and then the color <laughs> is gone. Uh, yeah, I hate it. <laughs> Does that answer your question? I guess so. I absolutely hate it. But some people love it, so. Some people love it. Um, in Watts, did you go through grisaille painting before color? Do you think it's an important step to do in learning oils? Does, uh, does it make the jump into color easier to understand? Uh, did we do grisaille? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, oh, wait. That's like... Gray, grayscale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Monochrome. I was thinking of something totally different. Yes, we, we do. That's the first color class or painting class that pe um, is recommended to take at Watts is the monochromatic so that you're not, you're not distracted by all the color. You're just, you're just trying to figure out this new medium that you're like, you have to figure out before you can really do anything. Um, there is a learning curve to just using a brush and mixing pigment uh, before you can even focus on all this fundamental stuff you learned with drawing. Um, you can't apply that if you just don't know how to use the tools. So you start with just black and white or burnt sienna or burnt umber um, and you just you work with that one color so you're not, you know, you're not worried about that kind of stuff. Um, Um, do you have any advice for somebody who lives in a city with no thriving art scene or community? I don't mind online communities, but I have a problem keeping up with it because I spend most of my free time doing activities such as working out and hiking. Nice. Uh, when I'm not doing art, hence, I don't have m much art friends I can connect with. Mm. I would say that there are probably people in your city that want to draw and paint, Yeah. but there's no workshops or anything that are going on so you know if you really want to you should start your own yeah i agree i think there's there's so many people i mean unless you live in a city with like 50 people in it you're, you're gonna find somebody who's excited um 
but yeah not maybe not like a thriving art community but you don't need a thriving community to have a few friends that are excited about the same stuff as you i mean every art community starts out like with one person like jeff watts started watts atelier when he was like 22 by himself and it was just for the purpose of doing that that's true that is yeah I'd really like to learn about the context and history behind art mediums or how they were invented. Do you have any good recommendations for resources on how to do that? Uh, say that again. Um, I'd like to learn about the context slash history behind our, how art mediums were evolved and invented. Do you have oh. any good recommendations? Art mediums were evolved and invented? Like a paint, like I guess yeah. paint. Oil paint. And how yeah. um, I don't know about how they evolved and how they invent. That's like a history lesson. I don't, I've never studied about the history of like oil paint and pigment um i know there's a few good books on just like oil painting materials and stuff if you just want to learn about them here let me get it um, here, oil. i know like this book i think is pretty good Wait, no, never mind. Hold on. Sorry. That's not it. Does Richard Schmidt have anything? Yeah, Richard Schmidt. Not like anything about actual painting, paint creation in this book? No, no, no. Not creation. Dude, I can't find that book. This book. materials and techniques it's got a lot here read off some of the chapters okay chapter titles and that lie paint uh pigments uh oil painting tempera painting ground for oil grounds for oil and tempera paintings watercolor and gouache pastel encaustic painting, mural painting, solvents and thinners, gums, casein, glues, and waxes, uh, the new materials, chemistry. The new materials? Is that like digital? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this book is written in... <laughs> How old is this book? Uh, 1822. <laughs> no, no. The new like, materials. Uh, Alizarin. Yeah. <laughs> Paint. <laughs> what? Paint yeah, is acrylic. New... Yeah, yeah. Pencils. Um, conservation of pictures, miscellaneous notes, appendix, and bibliographies. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. You have to mention sounds, that. Sounds like a good book. What? Sounds like a good book. Yeah. I um, have not read the whole thing, but I have read. It. I've like skipped to parts that I was, when I was trying to do research on certain things. Hmm. It's like a good book. It's kind of like Goldfinger, right? You're not gonna read through the Goldfinger book. It's like a. Encyclopedia. It's like an encyclopedia when you need to find information on very specific things. Um, I think I made his jaw a little skinny, but whatever. I wasn't trying to do that. But now it like is so obvious to me. <laughs> it's like distracting. Hmm. Hey, Proko, I live in Iran, and I have no way to buy your courses because of inflation and boycotts, so I hope you forgive Aww. me for pirating your courses. Will you please forgive me? I forgive you. Yeah. Thanks for watching them. It's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, forgive you but i hate you <laughs> no i, I, I hope mean, they're uh doing good for you yeah hopefully you pass on that knowledge to everyone else in your community that can't afford courses if that's if that's the value that that pirating that you're doing brings to the world then i'm okay with it What now?
Oh man, I'm not sure. What, I think I'm done. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to start putting in details because it's just it's gonna become. Could you? I mean, at, w at what stage could you start adding? De is this a painting that you would? This add is not a de in? no. Yeah, I would yeah. never add details to this. This is a color study. Uh, I didn't start it off to put detail. I have way too much pigment on the surface to put details. Uh, well, somebody's asking, how would you structure this differently if this were to be a more refined painting rather than a color study? Uh, if it was a wet painting? If, if it, how would you structure this if it were a more uh, refined painting rather than a color study? Oh, well, first of all, I would um, start with a much more accurate lay-in. And then I would do it. I would approach it more like I approached this one where I was doing little tiles instead of like this one where I like scumbled in a lot of skin tone first and then started adding tiles on top. Um, but also I would start with some washes of really, really thinned out paint underneath. I would not be painting on like a white surface. Um, what else? Hmm. Focus more on the drawing. Probably. Well, yeah, the, I, like I said, I would start with a much more refined lay-in. That that, that's the, the primary big difference there. Um, would you blend? Huh? Would you blend at all? Blend? A little bit, yeah. I, I would I would use, um, occasionally I would use a more of a sable, softer. This is a bristle, like a hog hair. This is very soft. So, like, um, where can I soften an edge? Mm, let's soften out. Beep, 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 beep. Ah, just destroyed the shape. Yeah. So, like, see how the way the hairs on this work? Like, they stop, they soften it more. They create a softer edge. Um. Have to choose community winners, by the way. Oh, community winners! Oh my God! Yeah. Why did we not start with that? I'm sorry, you guys. Um, can you pull it up? Yeah. Mike sent that. Sent the list of winners. Okay. It's in my Slack. Um, go to website. Um, yeah. Oh no, he oh. sent it to me. Sorry. Oh, go, I, go I, I guess I said put. I sent it here too. So. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Are they the same winners? Okay, we're gonna announce the community challenge winners. So, community challenge critique. Sorry, not community. Yeah, yeah, community challenge winners. So these are the people that have been doing the most helpful critiques in the Proko.com community, helping others get better. Um, and so, every Friday we're gonna. Well, I don't know. Not every forever, um, but like for the next month or so, we're gonna be rewarding people who are very helpful. Um. Go to now the one that he sent me. I just want to double check. Yeah, same ones? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So we will contact you guys. We got your email because you are you got an account. Um, can you read them? I can't see from uh, Yim. Yiming Wu. Yiming uh, Wu is the first winner. Uh, Serena Marenko and Ho Bogo. Ho oh, wow. It's oh, like a O A O Bogo. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you for being amazing and so helpful. <laughs> and what do they get? Last uh, time they got skulls. Course. Course, a course yeah, of your yeah. choice. Any course on Proco.com. Yeah. Good job, guys. You can even select the anatomy course. Which has three which parts. Is three courses together, yeah. but it's really one course. <laughs> Yeah. That's like 250 bucks. That's like the most economical. Like it's three yeah. times more efficient. If you don't to do already that. have that, you should probably get that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like way. It's like you, you, yeah. You should totally do it. Uh, but if you have it, then get some nail. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, community choice winners. If you're here, then cool. But <laughs> <laughs> so why do we make it awkward? Well, I mean, these well, are well, people well, that did like such an well, amazing well, job. No, but, but, they're like trying hard all week. They're helping people, and we're just like. 
Yeah. But but we, we we announced it way too late, right? We did. It's we like had, three hours. I, I feel so bad. I, yeah. Uh, I should have started with it. Next yeah. week we should start with it. Um, but yeah, we're pretty much wrapping up. I, as I'm as I'm just looking at this, I keep seeing like little plain transitions that I just didn't get, right? Like that. Like I know in the eye here, I'd like to get this like nice indication of the the eyelid, and that I didn't really get, but. Like that actually doesn't matter. I'm trying to study the color. I'm trying to make sure that the the environment feels right. So, um, I think at this point I did that. I don't need to keep going. Um, do you, what do you feel about this little big white spot right here? I feel like it actually it, it's like a graphic element that ties it together. You think you so? You know, because it's like if it wasn't there, then I'd assume that was the shirt going into the head. You know. I don't know. I, what I, if I make it and just put dark in here and just like put a nice, like a good outline? So, um, I mean, to me, that's where my it's right in the center, right? So my eye goes there. So, oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's not good. Yeah. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna get rid of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah. I actually looking at it on the screen right here where it's small. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my god, it's so distracting. Yeah. Okay. Um, David, if you're watching, I, mean, I need your address, man. Of course. Yeah, not, not, not to send the painting, just to... Yeah, I just need your address <laughs> just need to your come address. and bug you about yeah. comics and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid, man. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to talk about the drawing behind you at all? Or which drawing? Uh, the Ryan's, Ryan's drawing. What? Oh, Ryan Benjamin's drawing. Here. So, well, you we can't even see it, man. We'll oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Do you want to get the other one, too, or...? Which one? Dan Thompson's? No, no. Oh, the other Ryan Benjamin drawing? So Ryan was in the studio yesterday, Ryan Benjamin, and he he did this in like 15 minutes or something. <laughs> and he used a Loomis head. You can see there's a, there's a little Loomis drawing underneath. Freaking awesome, huh? And then, whoop, whoop. I'll just put that in, in my lap. Oh, yeah, or I'll take a brush. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and then he did that. Oh man, look at that! And that's these are gonna be videos coming up on yeah. YouTube, free YouTube videos. So cool. look out for these. Thank you. Yeah. And then also just uh, there's a new uh, drawing just purchased by Dan Thompson. Love that. So I guess I'll show it off. I saw this on Instagram and I messaged him. You guys should do that. If you can afford art, you should support artists and purchase, purchase this stuff. Yeah, Dan's a very good artist. Yes, he is. Okay. Is that it? Uh, uh, do you want to fill that spot? Oh, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, sorry. Fill that white spot. <laughs> Yeah. With some dark. Mm. I'm not sure which color to use, so I'm gonna muddy my colors. Muddy colors. But I'm gonna, you know what? My value is gonna be correct. Oh, look at that! It worked. <laughs> um, hey guys, what were those? Uh, what were the suggested powers for Proco Man and Doctor Distort? What were the suggested? Yeah, yeah. Powers? What do you mean by? Um, like, like, what were the what were the powers of Doctor Distort and Proco Man? The okay, so Proco Man shot um, gesture drawings. Yeah, like a, a an army of gesture drawings, and they would go and they start attacking people. So they're like little drawings that just like like pull on your lips and poke your eyes. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, this Doctor Dis Mister Distort distorted perspective so it's kind of like the inception scene where like all the perspective is being warped and stuff like that yeah um i uh we we butchered his name who which one uh, joe uh, joe uh, uh, <laughs> yeah i win and i got my name butchered <laughs> well you gotta tell us how to whole if you whole, if you comment wait, okay comment how on how to wow. pronounce it Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 is that well, worse? I, I don't know. Ho, 
Hoa. Well, we'll, we'll try and pronounce how? it. How? Maybe it's just how. I guess so. That makes sense. How or ho or hoa or joa I, I or joe. It's, it's maybe joe. it's just joe. <laughs> maybe we're overthinking it. <laughs> Bogo. 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 Oh, maybe we butchered the last name? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. Um, uh, again, that... I totally ignored the uh, the glasses on this one. But yeah, it's just it's too much of a detail. So I can tell it's David. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like him. Wait, really? No, come on. If if uh, if I didn't tell you who this is, <laughs> and I just showed you the painting, you could not tell that's David. I would. There's I would, no. I, there, I, there's I think, no features in there. It's I, like a a plane. It's like a sorrow man. Yeah, but I, I mean, <laughs> he, he's bald, right? He had. That's like, so what? There's he's so many bald, bald people. Gr- I think. I don't know. I think his skin tone and him being bald and you no know, facial. I, I think it it all. You okay. Know, it's all David. You know? yeah. yeah. I guess the the no eyebrows would make it more clear because if yeah if you had eyebrows I would definitely have to indicate that in the uh, in there. The, here I think it, I made it look like there is an eyebrow because <laughs> yeah. I started to indicate glasses. Shoot. Yeah. Ah, oh, now that really bugs me. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, well, it it and especially because there's the glasses frame the little frame indication there no and yeah, then this yeah, yeah. it kind of looks like a, yeah it's like what is that like a ah man or something no it bugs me yeah, yeah. well whatever well, we're about three hours and 15 minutes we're, in, we're so. way too far into it how many people are still yeah oh yeah we've lost 40 percent of viewership now so oh, it's, it's seven yeah it's yeah it's good yeah. um so anyway thanks guys i'm gonna do something again next week not sure yet what maybe you guys could suggest what you want me to do um, in my next Friday live stream. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like we are too. Ooh, ooh, next week. Let's announce what's what the, the events next week. Oh, Can uh, you, um, okay. I feel like it might be, um, influence. Um, Okay, looks like everyone's confirmed for next week. Okay, next week we got Monday. Steven Zapata is uh, publishing a course and he's going to have a free video on YouTube on Monday. Also, Monday, live Draftsman episode. That's right, so another live stream on Monday. God. Tons of stuff. (laughs) Okay. Lots of things. David Doodles, free video on Tuesday. Also, he's publishing some content, uh, like premium content. Wednesday, Lane Brown live stream. <laughs> Lane Brown, yeah. yeah so he's, he's the awesome. guy selling the brush packs, and yeah. he's also really good draftsman. <laughs> like, yeah. he'll, he's awesome. Yeah, like when I see his stuff on Instagram, I feel like he did it in charcoal. But anyway, whatever. He's doing a live stream. Andrew Keith also on Wednesday doing an AMA. I think uh, he well, that might change. It It'll might. still be an Andrew Keith event, but I don't know if it's an AMA. Yeah. Um, Thursday, Slew is doing something. He, I think he's releasing something on his channel. Um, he, he's doing a painting and stuff. You guys can already see. He already posted the painting he did on uh, in the community on Proco, so you can check that out. Uh, Friday, Jeremy Cranford is doing an AMA. He works at Blizzard. He, he hires people. He hires artists. And so if you want to work in the entertainment industry as an artist, you should get your portfolio ready for next Friday. Especially Blizzard. Blizzard or any company similar to Blizzard, like if you want to work in that, you, you this is really an opportunity for you to get advice from somebody who hires artists. Um, and then also that Friday, I'm doing another live stream. So, boo-ba-da-boo. We're good. We're good. Thank you, guys. I think we're done. Can you want to end it? Uh, yeah. I'm so hungry. <laughs> cool. Uh, and... and-